Chapter 1, Think Positively, Change Your Thoughts and You Change Your World, Norman Vincent Peale. You can't lead a cavalry charge if you don't think. You can't lead a cavalry charge if you think you look funny on a horse. Increase your self-esteem. People with low self-esteem rarely achieve their potential. They won't take necessary risks. They wallow in self-blame and they can't trust others and they remain in the background when they are needed up front. Can you elevate your self-worth? Yes, you can. Yes, you can get angry enough to do what it takes to reverse the losses and suffer the results of your low self-regard. Don't tolerate another awful day of the status quo. Yes, you can if you hold a deep, seated spiritual belief fall back on them many religions provide believers within an inner power that builds self-esteem yes you can elevate other human beings teach them something to improve in their lives serve them help them achieve their goals they can't reach by themselves empower them to succeed watch your inner self grow as a result yes you can write down the personal development goals at the beginning of each day and ask yourself what will i do to work on on my goals today let me pursue the achievement of these goals and lift you to a self-concept. Yes, you can make a list of your most important accomplishments in the past 12 months. Study the list. None of them may get into the Guinness Book of World Records, but you do have and made a difference in the lives of others. Yes, you can talk about your low self-esteem to someone whose opinion you respect. Get ready for the shock when this person tells you how valuable you are. Yes, you can write an essay that answers these questions. What if life's experiences had led you to a devalue of yourself? What price do you have to pay in the feelings from the way that you do? How much does it hold you back? Are you angry enough about what's going on and want to make a change? What's your plan? When will you start? When it is dark enough, you could see the stars. Feel more optimistic. We live more increasingly negative times fueled by the dis integration of social bonds and dissolution of religious faith. A measure of optimism helps of combat gloom and gives us the courage and energy to shed adversity. Can you muster hopefulness in the midst of despair? Yes, you can. Remember the life teaches us that this too will soon pass. Yes, you can dispute through the present adversity and hopeless of a permanent. Describe the causes of your pessimism on a sheet of paper next to each cause. Document the evidence that is real and not imagined. For each real cause, write down at least one way to counteract it. Challenge the imagined cause of alternative explanations and all contradicti contradictory evidence. Share your concerns with people you love. Talk through problems with them and let them help you. Yes, you can reject unnecessary negative assumptions. Example, rather than believe the world is falling apart, tell yourself we would benefit from a moral renewal yes you can feel yourself slipping talk yourself out of despair say something like I'm going to overwhelm this bad feeling optimism is pouring in through every pore of my skin yes you can recognize the two common causes of pessimism are fear and hate the greatest danger are the emotions that shut off your mind determine whether or not it is the root of your discouragement and if you discover one of these emotions exercise it Yes, you can distract yourself from depressing thoughts every time you catch yourself complaining. Quickly immerse yourself in activity and take your mind off a troubled subject. Yes, you can keep bleak news in perspective. We should all be concerned about the future because we have to spend the rest of our lives there. Look for the future and forget the past. One of the reasons some people have never have happy todays is because they're continuing to relive unhappy yesterdays. They would rather revisit the pain and past and plan for a fantastic future. You can't change what's already happened to you. You can't get with your, you can't get on with your life if you can't accept what's already happened. And you can't put safeguards into place to ensure a better tomorrow. Yes, you can if the pain is in the history is emotionally devastating. For example, sexual abuse or professional help. Search for professional help immediately rather than relying on the following advice. But write a plan for what you plan to do and that certain or subject of sadness in the history doesn't return. If preventing or reoccurring is not totally within your control, whom will you enlist for help? Picture your memory as you roll through photographic films and past represent films already exposed. Some of the poses you may have as your favorites. Future is the unexposed portion, awaiting for images that have not yet to experience. What wonderful memories do you intend to capture on the remaining frames? Whenever you feel yourself slipping into the negatives of the past, slam a pillow, slam your fingers and shout, no, use a strong physical signal as an on and off switch. Say this and mean it. At some point in my life, I've got to give up all hope of a better yesterday. Tell yourself today is the first day of the rest of my life. Ask a loved one, what can I begin doing today that would make it more fun for you to be with me? Ask someone at work, what can I do? What can I do to begin today 
that would allow me to serve you better. When I look back at all these worries, I remember the story of an old man who said on his deathbed that he had a lot of trouble in his life, most which never happened. Winston Churchill. Reduce your worry. How do you handle your worries? Do you keep them in perspective? Do you allow you to be discouraged yourself, to be depressed? And debilate? Do you debilate yourself? Can you prevent these worries by making more worries? Well, yes, you can ask yourself, is it real? What is the evidence that's really? Is it something to fear? Yes, you can if the situation is real. What is the impl implications? How will it last? How will you deal with it? Is it something that you can change right now? Yes, you can. Ask yourself, what do I accomplish by worrying about this? If I fear the event in the future, ask yourself three questions. What is the worst thing that could happen? How likely is the possibility? And what can I do to reduce the possibility that will occur? Ask, and yes, you can. Carpe diem. Carpe diem. Seize the day. Act now to keep the situation from taking you over. Yes, you can ask yourself, how will I feel about the year from now? And a year from now, the test of time will show that this is anywhere near as important as I've convinced myself that it is. Yes, I can change how I foresee a dreaded event, discover what it actually, and find a goodness in it, and look forward to those benefits. Yes, I can talk over your problem with someone who will listen. Yes, I can write about my problem, jot some ideas for how to deal with the problems. Yes, I can promise people you know what whenever they catch a worrying about, whenever you catch them worrying about things that's beyond their control, you'll pay them one dollar. Agree to see a therapist soon after you've lost ten dollars. Read Dale Carnegie's book, How to Stop Worrying and Start Living. Constant effort and frequent mistakes are the stepping stones to genius. Albert Hubbard. Forgive your mistakes. Some people live in a perpetual state of penance. They repeatedly suffer from the pain of their errors, fearing the, from the future because they are paralyzed by the past. Can you remove the shackles of your past mistakes and move forward? Yes, you can. When you've made up an error that gets you down, take a sheet of paper out, write it down exactly what happened. Assess why you made the mistake. What, where were the causes, and how many of them were within your control? Think about the problems and the pain it created by the error from whom you might suffer. What is the worst thing likely to happen as a result? Check the check with someone else. Reality usually isn't as bad as your fears would have you believe. Apologize and seek forgiveness quickly from people whom have suffered in the result of your mistake. When they offer forgiveness, accept it with thanks. If your guilt is consuming you, seek professional guidance or spiritual counsel. Recognize the benefits of the mistake. What good has come out of it? If nothing else, you have learned a valuable lesson in the future behavior. What is of what is it? Vulcanized rubber, post-it notes, penicillin were all created by a mistake. Use your mistakes to build a greater understanding of others who make mistakes and how they feel about them. Forgive generously and quickly when you believe that other people are sincerely re repentant. Remember, that a mistake reflects your performance in a particular situation under a particular set of circumstances. It is not a statement about you. You have the power to change your performance in the future. Problems are only opportunities and work clothes. Henry J. Kaiser. Conquer adversity. Everyone goes through bad times. Successful people know how to snap back. You can develop qualities that will enable you to triumph over adversity. Yes, you can maintain confidence in your resilience. Don't underestimate the power and push beyond what you normally are capable of. Take advantage of this opportunity to prove that you can take control of your life. Yes, you can pray and develop an unshakable belief in something greater than yourself. Faith in God is a great comfort in times of trial. Even people who aren't religious need to believe in something beyond self-preservation. Yes, you can move quickly through the natural period of feeling sorry for yourself. Dissolve your disappointment, anger, or grief so that you can get on with your life. Yes, you can develop a concrete plan for recovering soon after adversity strikes. Win a battle of commitment of yourselves and aggressive strategies for overcoming hardships. Yes, you can find the opportunity that adversity always presents. Any change of status quo provides an opening for improving, improving your life. For example, those losing a job, you may discover a lucrative career opportunity that you might not have ever pursued within the comfort of a steady employment. Yes, you can let your friends and family help to absorb the pain and give you ideas to cope with adversity and get beyond it. Don't pull in. Reach out. Yes, you can persist, fight, and survive. Don't even think about quitting. Yes, you can fulfill the obligation you have in yourself to the people around you in your life and even consider the possibility of allowing yourself to be victimized by tough times. Our life is what our thoughts make it. 
Our life is what our thoughts make it. Marcus Aquilius. Think clearly. Errors is thinking cause to an erect roadblocks in our minds to prevent us from properly weighing decisions. You can get past these roadblocks. Yes, you can. Wait as long as you can to draw conclusions about anything. Remain open to certainty that something has an additional information on the subject that is worth listening to. Don't be so quick to dismiss ideas that contradict what you already know. Divorce the, divorce the message from the messenger. Don't evaluate information according to how you feel about it or who's delivering it. Don't. Yes, you can. Don't be so deduced, seduced in believing the phenomena are casually linked simply because the statistically related. Example, cities that have many churches usually also harbor large numbers of prostitutes because large urban center towns have spawned both, not because one causes the other. Don't be too quickly to form explanations for the behavior of others, for results of data you collect, or for the events you observe. And an after-the-fact interpretation is rarely correct if you lack a thorough knowledge of the circumstance unique to, for example, a person's data or event. Reject slogans, propaganda, buzzwords intended to short circuit your thinking. Example, how much of what adverse how much of what is advertised is free doesn't cost anything. Sleep on major decisions. Time has a way of clarifying thinking. Don't stereotype. Not all snakes are poisonous. Not all chemical companies pollute. And not all lawyers are just in it for the money. Don't assume that there is a first bit of information that you get on the new subject is correct. Continue to listen read and ask have more thou showest speak less than thou knowest William Shakespeare prevent cockiness self-confidence is an empowering belief it encourages us to take risks it enables us to act decisively it spurs out our achievement and our full potential but when our success causes you to seduce to your press clippings you may cross the line from surety to self-obsession you can protect yourself from the case of conceit Yes, you can. As soon as you think that you're pretty hot stuff, examine a globe of a world map. There are five million people on this planet. How many of them know your name? Yes, you can. Stop cockiness is often little more than a camouflage for self-doubt. Ask yourself what insecurities you compensate for the pumping up of your own ego. Recognize the talents are a gift. What people admire, nothing more than God acting through you. Read your language of self-serving statements of self-promotion. Cut your I statements in half. Mention accomplishments only when others insist that you do so. Spend more time listening. You can't boast when you're not talking. When others recognize your success, don't feign modest, modestly and don't even explain your accomplishment, accomplishments. Just say thank you. Do acknowledge those those who have helped you study the behavior of the most talented and respected people in your profession model their behavior you model your behavior after the classy way they handle their fame if you're sure from what whatever you're becoming in vain ask trusted colleagues friends family members this question what one behavior do you see in me that might be considered or others as conceited the desire of perfection is the worst disease that ever afflicted the human mind Luis Marquez de Fontaine's Accept imperfection in yourself. There's nothing wrong with striving for the best. In fact, it's a winning attitude. It's very wrong to expect others and yourself to be flawless under all conditions. If you do so, you're asking for nothing but frustration because consistent perfection is impossible. Can you learn to tolerate less than perfection in yourself? Yes, you can. Draw a line down in the center of a sheet of paper. Left column, enter the pleasures of perfectionism. In the right column, jot down drawbacks under the heading, the pain of perfectionism. Which side has more potent points? Go back over the pleasure pain sheet, reevaluate the validity in each entry in the pleasure side, and make certain that it isn't simply the means of avoiding risks and maintaining control and protecting your ego. Ask other perfectionists about the pain and pleasure they experience from such behaviors. Ask people close to you how your perfectionist perfectionism affects them your relationship with them and you identify three aspects of your life that you love but you've ignored lately because you've been trying to so hard to succeed vow to bring them back into your life take stock of your achievements marvel on how far you've already progressed rather than laminating over the degree to which you've fallen short of perfection do something wild and crazy don't plan it don't have any expectations about it and don't evaluate the results concentrate on the here and now don't obsess with the past from which you might have accomplished embrace quality as a journey you have never achieved you may never achieve the goal of perfection but you can have a marvelous trip a cynic is a man who when he smells flowers looks around for a coffin be less cynical 
A sinner goes through life more depressed than depressing. Most people have enough negativity in their lives without having to add yours to their load. So don't tolerate someone who smells roses and looks around for a casket. If you want to improve your outlook on life, yes, you can do it. Yes, you can. If your cynicism turns into a cynical depression, seek professional counsel. Signs of depression are loss of interest in work, family fun, insomnia, excessive sleep, overeating, loss of appetite, acute sorrow, plunge, self-esteem, and fatigue. Yes, you can consider the impact of your negative attitude on people around you. you. May prevent You may prevent from doing your best and living their lives fully. But if you have a negative people in your life, avoid contact with them until you're strong enough to deflect their pessimism. Yes, you can. Rent the video. It's a wonderful life. Watch it and answer the question. Suppose you had never been born. How many lives, how many would you be less complete because you were not around? Suppose you had never been born. How many lives would be less complete because you were not around? Yes, you can read the book, The Miracle Worker. After you've read it, answer the question, What can I do to start hearing and seeing the things Helen Keller heard and saw? Yes, you can observe others who achieve the success you hope to attain. Notice how many of them have a positive, enthusiastic attitude. Do you think that they became that way by following success? Or do you think their optimism is one of the big reasons for their achievements? Yes, you can talk to professionals who devote their lives to helping people with the grief and sorrow. For example, people who work in a pediatric oncology. Where do they get the strength to get up each day and attack their jobs? You'll likely find that the key to their motivation is hope. Without it, you're dead. If you think you can, you can't. If you think you can't, you're right. Mary Kay Ash. Avoid negative self-talk. What you see in your mind is what you create. And what you think about is what you get. And what you speak is what you become. If you can maintain a high quality mental outlook that rejects the thoughts and language that holds you back, you can replace the phrase, I'll try, with I will. I'll try means I feel compelled to do it, but I really don't want to do it. I try is nothing more than that. I will. Yes, you can. Ask fewer questions that start with the word why. For example, change. Why do I disagree? Or what do you disagree with? Notice how much less nagging and more assertive the second one is. Why do you disagree? To what do you disagree with? Kill. Shoulds, coulds, oughts, have tos. These words increase your stress and your guilt. Example, replace I should pay the bills with I will want to pay the bills tonight. Start saying yes when people offer to help you. Instead of responding automatically, oh, no thanks, I can handle it. Start saying yes. Start accepting compliments and praise graciously instead of protesting that you don't deserve them. Say a big thank you and nothing more. When you've asked to feel and how you feel, even gratuitously, say great, marvelous. Not just fine or okay, say great or marvelous, excellent, stop mumbling, speak clearly, distinctly, confidently, open up your future possibilities by replacing I can't and I don't, I won't with I haven't up until now, I haven't up until now, never say I'm too stupid, fat, short, unexperienced, weak, afraid, disorganized, never say I'm too... Never say or think, I might fail. You might learn a new way not to do something, but you'll never fail. Hating people is like burning down your house to get rid of a rat. Harry Emerson Fodstick. Stop holding grudges. Life lets us down. People we count on disappoint us. Others transgress against us. A financial fortune is lost overnight. A healthy body is broken in an instant. With the misfortune of strikes, some people generate enormous resentment against others, against life in general. They're determined to extract the measure for what they have lost. Others accept their fate and go on to make the best of life. You could free yourself of grudges. Yes, you can recognize that the grudge is weighing you down and holding you back. Even if you recapture what you've lost, you only regain the status quo. Use your precious time instead to grow and to advance. Yes, you can not allow misfortunes to turn you into an entitled seeker. And instead of focusing on your rights from which you have coming to you, aim on the higher things of life. Help others out and fixers like yours accomplish the extraordinary feat. Acquire knowledge. Learn, leave behind the meaningful legacy. Talk to others about what has happened to you. Each time you rehash the scenario, take additional measures of your rancor out of your voice. Eventually, you'll reach a point where you can honestly laugh at your own fate. Ask people whom you trust for an example of dysfunction they see in your behavior as a result of grudge that you, can ca that you carry around. Once you put this into behavior behind you and ask 
and to suggest for another self-defeating behavior to work on. Visualize the troubling events. Reduce the size of the picture and moving it away from you. Make it as small as you can. Each time you do this, start with a smaller picture and you'll eventually be free of a troubling event. Forgive publicly any persons who may have wronged you. Forgive publicly any persons who may have wronged you and get on with your life. Chapter 2. Act powerfully. 40,000 wishes won't fill your bucket with fishes. Success in life comes not from holding a good hand, but in playing a poor hand well. Achieve success. Everyone wants to succeed. Even though we cannot all agree on definition of success, whatever your definition, you can depend on a proven formula for getting you what you want in life. Yes, you can. Take the first step toward success to become totally fed up with not having achieved it yet. Get impatient from what you haven't reached your life goals. Yes, you can. Decide on exactly what you want, where you yearn to be in life. What will success look like, sound like, smell like, feel like, taste like when you achieve it? Yes, you can. Map out your plan for success. What will you do? By when? With whom? Using what new resources? Yes, you can. Take action. Do it. Follow through with passion. Stay physically fit and build your energy. Yes, you can. As you implement your plan, pay back those who help you succeed. Yes, you can. Spend five minutes each day improving the quality of your communication with others. Yes, you can. Believe in yourself and persist. Abraham Lincoln lost 80 eight elections before becoming the president. Colonel Sanders suffered 1,000 rejections before he sold his first chicken recipe. Yes, you can respond to the feedback you get as you implement your plan. Learn from what happens to each stage. Adjust and succeed. Yes, you can. Imitate people who have accomplished goals just like yours. Do what they do. Say what they say. Think what they think. Yes, you can. Not be afraid to fail. Abe and the colonel weren't and don't be afraid to succeed. Serve. Yes, you can serve. Give others more than they expect. Help them without reservation. Be a team player. With your talents and industry, with science and the steadfast honest, honesty, which eternal pursuits right, regardless of consequences, you may promise yourself everything but health without which there is no happiness. Thomas Jefferson. Improve your health. Good health is a prerequisite for tackling each of the challenges in this book. No matter where your age or circumstances, you can improve your health in some you can improve your health health in some simple ways. Yes, you can. Don't smoke. Even those who escape cancer have their energy sapped into this nasty habit. If you drink alcohol, use it responsibly. Excessive use causes accidents, illness, family trauma, deterioration of your personal effectiveness. Don't use drugs. Some substances like cocaine can damage the cardiovascular system. Reduce your risk of AIDS and other sexually transmitted diseases through combinations of abstinence, fidelity, and use condoms. Get a complete physical every two years before the age 40 and every year after. Wear a seatbelt every time you drive. Protect your skin from the sun. Be certain you get enough sun in the winter months to ward off depressed mood, the largest and increased appetites. Eat three well-balanced meals each day. Cut down on fats. Watch your sodium intake. Eat more fruits, vegetables, grains. Drink plenty of water. Shun food, fads, and diet plants. Exercise regularly. Consult your physician before you start. Have your drinking water analyzed for bacteria and lead. Install at least one smoke alarm and one carbon dioxide detector in your home and keep your batteries fresh. Check random levels if you live in a high-risk area of the country. Use your mind to improve your health. Better relationships and more positive outlooks on life will benefit your physical well-being. Even laughter helps. Whenever the urge to exercise comes up, I lie down for a while and it passes. Robert Maynard Hutchins Exercise wisely. Nothing is more consistently prescribed by physicians for healthy, energetic, and productive life than exercise. You can achieve these goals for yourself. Yes, you can. Before getting started, see a doctor and set specific fitness goals. Yes, you can. Not become obsessed with exercise, but with three 20-minute aerobic workouts per week are enough for most people to stay physically fit. Don't expect immediate magical results. Shoot for gradual long-term progress. Don't punish yourself by swallowing the no pain, no gain philosophy. Philosophy. Listen to your body. Don't push. It passed its limits. Walk briskly one mile day after 
the day after dinner. Walk down the hall to see a colleague instead of picking up the telephone. Park in a remote but safe section of parking lots. Take the stairs for cl before you climb three flights or less. Before investigating an expensive equipment, make a serious commitment to exercise. Research the relative benefits, drawbacks of treadmills, stationary bikes, cross-country ski machines, stair climbers, free weights, multi-station gym machines. Choose an exercise that you enjoy and stick with it. Spend three to five minutes warming up your muscles. Cardiovascular system System before doing any exercise the older you get the more you need to supplement aerobic exercise with strength training flexibility exercises weight-bearing activities which help keep your bones strong during an aerobic workout keep your heart rate at 60 to 80 percent of its predicted maximum rate for your age discontinue strenuous exercise during illness Energy, like the biblical grain of mustard seeds, will remove mountains. Increase your energy. One of the most severe limiting factors when it's come to working towards a better life is your level of energy. You can reduce your number of times you feel too tired to accomplish your goals. Yes, you can. Schedule playful breaks into your workday. Listen to your favorite song. Play a fun weekend evening. Browse through your favorite catalog. Fantasize about your next vacation. Play with a puzzle or a toy. Call your best friend. Do something that you love to do. Eat a light lunch dominate by protein ensure afternoon vigor drink plenty of water at least eight glasses a day fill your diet with plenty of grains fresh fruits vegetables laugh a lot hearty belly laugh stimulate and release chemicals in the brain that increase your well-being exercise briskly at least three times a week for 20 minutes each session find a healthy pick-me-up that provides needed sugar to the system for mid-afternoon when most people's blood sugar drops make sure you do enough deep breathing during the day keep sufficient oxygen in your blood three or four times during the day take eight deep breaths and hold each one in for a long time continue the deep breathing if you notice a difference in your energy level if you get tired in late afternoons take a refreshing cat nap get the right amount of sleep you know you're on the right track when you can awake simultaneously with the ringing of your alarm clock do not take life too seriously you will never get out of any you will never get out of it alive if you take it too seriously Albert Hubbard relax life rushes on a frenetic pace stress is all around you the few moments you go into yourself for each day may be the only opportunities you have to rest an overworked mind and body. You can learn how to relax, cuddle up with a good book, unwind with an enjoyable hobby, collecting, crafting, studying favorite subjects on reliable sources of diversion, learn to fantasize, play with your mind, dream dreams, imagine situations you want to have happen. Take every day of a vacation you have coming to you in a large chunk when you return to work say to yourself no one is going to mess with this good feeling for at least a week protect it for as long as you can don't plan how you'll use your leisure time just do for the fun things that come to mind spend time with children let them teach you how to play again set aside at least one hour each day for yourself never do anything you have to do during that time spend it alone for the loved ones or your friends from whom you have a knack for helping you or they have a knack for helping you unwind find a space in your home where you can physically shut out the rest of the world for a short regular period kick back successfully relax the muscle groups of your body start with your furrowed brows rent a video at the night of the 1937 movie Lost Horizon. True inner peace comes from permanent connection with God. Let Him into your life. Go on a spiritual retreat. A man dies daily, only to be reborn in the morning, bigger, better, and wiser. Emmett Fox. Defeat insomnia. It's great to wake up refreshed in the morning rather than being jolted out of a sound snooze because you couldn't get enough sleep the night before. Sleep deprivation can bring serious consequences. Irritability, fatigue, subsequently a wide range of illnesses from headaches to psychosis. Like the average person, you can fall asleep within 5 to 10 minutes. Yes, you can monitor your diet to ensure that you're not ingesting large amounts of caffeine within a few hours of retiring. Cut back on your pace of physical activities at least one hour before retiring. Refuse to participate in any disturbing, stimulating discussions at least an hour before retiring in the night. Don't watch the news before you go to bed. Take a calming, satisfying 
book to bed. Get under the covers and read lying on your back. Play a relaxation tape at your bedside. Some of the recorded just for this purpose. And choose your own from an easy listening section of your own music store. Select a pleasant, satisfying fantasy to run through in your mind once the lights go out. Keep searching for the works consistently for you. Don't think about going to sleep. Focus on getting as cozy, as comfortable as you can in bed. After lying in bed for 30 minutes without falling asleep, get up and do something relaxing. Then return to bed for a fresh start. If your problem is serious, get an appointment at the sleep disorder clinic at the nearest medical center. Archie doesn't know how to worry without getting upset. Edith Bunker on All in the Family. Reduce your stress. We live incredibly hectic lives, doing more and more with less and less. You can defeat the resulting stress before it gets to you. Yes, you can engage in an active leisure activity such as taking an amusement park ride, mountain climbing, skiing, playing tennis. Yes, you can find a hobby that exercises and relaxes your mind. Example, collecting, playing music, reading, painting, working on crafts. Yes, you can set aside three hours each weekend to visit a local museum, library, or historic site. Yes, you can redecorate your office, paint the walls, soothing blue, put a table lamp in your desk for an easier reading, get a new green plant to provide visual pleasure, bring something from home to personalize the decor. Yes, you can take frequent short breaks, inhale every slow deeply, deeply in for five seconds, taking 10 seconds to exhale, drink a full glass of water on each break. Yes, you can take your vacations. Yes, you can reject stress generating thoughts when you've been cut off into traffic. Chuckle at the other driver's incompetence of selfishness rather than getting engaged. Replace catastrophic words like awful, terrible, and horrendous with phrases like, it could have been better. Stop expecting so much of yourself and others. Buy a book or a tape on relaxing techniques and breathing exercises. Find one that works for you. Practice good nutrition. Get regular exercise and adopt proper sleeping patterns. Before you buy any so-called labor-saving device, for example, a computer, be sure it will really make your life better, not merely cram more productivity into your day. If you don't know where you are going, you might as well, you might wind up someplace else. Yogi Berra Achieve personal goals. Having personal goals establishes hope for a better tomorrow. Attaining them is in a sense of satisfaction and accomplishment. You can set and achieve personal development goals. Yes, you can construct goals that are challenging and stretch you to reach. But don't be frustrated for yourself by setting goals that you'll never accomplish. Limit yourself to three goals at a time. Set goals with this question. How will I add value to the people I serve? For example, customers to the people that serve me. For example, employees and to myself. Write down your goals. Put them in your time planner or in another visible place from which you can see them frequently. Thought out goal is a wish. A written down goal becomes a commitment. Make your goal specific that you can begin to take an exact step needed to accomplish them. Replace to go back to school with no enroll in fall class of business program at a community college. Schedule each of the steps you need to take and accomplish the goal. Put them in a realistic timeline. Visualize yourself. Your, visualize yourself achieving each goal. See, hear, smell, touch, and taste the doing of it. Go public with your goals. Discuss them with others and to increase your commitment to them. Engage in frequent self-talk about your goals. Take stock in how well you're doing and adjust your steps to get better results. Congratulate yourself on your success. Prod yourself to overcome procrastination. Whenever you achieve a personal development goal, celebrate and then go on to the new one. Sixty years ago, I knew everything. Now I know nothing. Education is a progress discovery of our own ignorance. Will Durant Expand your knowledge. There's no practical limit to the amount of information you can put into your brain. You can advantage and then take advantage of it in its vast capacity to soak up knowledge by pursuing any topic that interests you. You can learn anything you want. Yes, you can. Set a personal development goal of gaining knowledge in a specific field of any particular topic and go for it. Yes, you can spend time well-educated people, especially around well-educated people like those who like to talk about ideas. Don't be intimidated by them. Listen to them. Converse with them. Learn from them. Yes, you can ask a lot of questions when someone discusses something unfamiliar to you. Ask him or her to explain. The only dumb question is the one you didn't ask. Yes, you can break out of the habit of watching TV or videos in the evening. See a play. Attend a symphony. 
or go to a travel lecture. Yes, you can read nonfiction, biographies, news magazines, newspapers, carry reading material with you from when you go and turn dead time into learning time, even if it's only for a few minutes. Yes, you can keep a collection of educational audio tapes in your car to make a commuting travel more profitable. Yes, you can continue your formal education. Sign up for college courses, a class at your library, or a seminar at work. Yes, you can. If you can afford to travel, visit a different destination each time. Yes, you can every Sunday. Reflect on new ideas you gained during the past week. Enter them into a journal and comment on your plan to use them. Brainstorm relationships among ideas. Review the entries you made last week three months ago six months ago take time to deliberate to deliberate but when it's time for actions has arrived stop thinking and go on napoleon bonaparte make better decisions success comes from making sound decisions college or job married or single this person or that one repair or buy a new one rent or own this job or that one now or later you can make the best choices yes you can recognize that you will never have a perfect information for making important decisions set the goal of making good decisions with sufficient information within a limited time to find the problem to be solved what exactly is the gap between where you are and where you want to be list as many options as you can and close that gap be creative and ask the others for their suggestions don't jump on the first good looking alternative and don't stop until you run out of ideas determine the criteria your final decision will satisfy what must will you insist upon what once will you hope for and what in their in relative importance apply your criteria at all options then select the one that meets all must conditions and does the best job of achieving your most important wants. before you implement your decisions ask yourself what might go wrong with it prepare yourself and solve problem glitches down the road get feedback can find other flaws in the thinking that could help you from getting to where you want to be get the feedback act on decision don't second guess yourself but a new information comes to light be flexible and revise the decision when you're paralyzed own up to the cause it is a perfectionism insecurity and aversion to risk fear of failure or hoping to be of all things to all people genius is the gold in the mine talent is the miner who works and brings it out genius is the gold in the mine Talent is the miner who works and brings it out. Discover your hidden talents. Most people fail to unleash most of their abilities during their lifetime. You have talents, potential skills, and you've never become known to you or shared within the world. You can uncover your unique gifts. Yes, you can. Try new things. Take new assignments. Consider a new career direction. Experiment with your aptitudes. Keep searching for your niche. Write this at the top of a sheet of a paper, things I really enjoy doing. Carry the sheet around you for a week, making entries that you think of as you think of them. And at the end of the week, study the list of yourself and how closely it corresponds to what you actually do. Any time on that list are not now a part of your life and work them and they may represent hidden talents. At the top of the second sheet of paper, things I did well a year ago but stopped doing. Each entry on the sheet is a potential forgotten talent. At the top of the third sheet of paper, write things things I do that people compliment me on or say I make look easy. These make talents from which you want to find a larger outlet and more opportunity to apply. Ask people close to these questions. Do you think I'm making the best possible use of my abilities? Is there something that you believe I have an ability to do that I'm not doing? Have I missed my calling? What do you do apart from work? Which of your talents is evident from the groups that you join, the volunteer you work with, the hobbies you enjoy? Find ways to apply some of these talents more fully in the work and also in your family life. I used to think that anyone doing anything weird was weird. I suddenly realized that anyone doing anything weird wasn't weird at all. It was the people saying they were weird that were weird. Paul McCartney Increase your creativity. Creativity is using your mind to change, revitalize, reorder portions of your life. You're creative when you make something new based on your perceived in this world. You're born with some creativity, but you can develop it much further. Yes, you can. Think like a child. Play with ideas. Ask why not and what if. Believe if there is always a better way or a different way. Engage in new activities that have always fascinated you. 
daydream about what you're working on see fragments of it in your mind's eye move them around in your brain capture the new ideas popping into your head use mind mapping when you're planning on a new speech rapport seminar or project right the central idea in the middle of the sheet of the paper, draw a dozen or so lines in that emanating the central idea like rays from a sun. Over a period of days, brainstorm all the major ideas you can over your position and over the ends of the rays. When your creativity is finally spent, cluster the many ideas into the five main points. Focus on those. Don't fear mistakes. Creative people make them and profit by them. Associate with people who will pro prod you question your assumptions and help sharpen your ideas keep inspirational people by your side those who encourage risk taking and thrive on change experience your innate creativity by doing something for your sheer joy of it without worrying about results become absorbed by the task at hand concentrate so intently on it that when you're doing you do what it takes to begin so clearly that many ways in which it can be improved God gave us memory that we might have the roses in December James M. Berry. Improve your memory. You can't remember the name of someone you met two minutes ago or forget the combination to your safe, the digits of your private phone line you escaped. Last year's sales figures became blur when you needed to recall them. Can you do it better at retaining important facts and figures? Yes, you can. Exercise moderately but regularly. You improve your memory by enhancing your strength and cardiovascular conditioning, lessening stress and improving digest digestion and sleep. Yes, you can keep a diary for a month recording of your memory lapses. Do tend to forget names, telephone numbers, appointments, facts, something else on which you need to focus on memory improvement. Look over material from which you need to memorize, then at a time before it passes, review it again. Double the time before you look at it again. Keep doubling the time between reviews. Do this to remember names. Listen to the pronunciation of the name while looking intently at the person. Repeat the full name. Translate the name into a familiar object. Just suppose it was an unusual facial feature or person. Later, look back at the people you've met and associate names with faces. Remember, list of items by turning them into pictures that you connect together in your mind's eye. Use a photo, use a phonetic alphabet of consonants and consonant sounds to translate hard to remember numbers into an easy call mental picture. I equals T, D, 2 equals N, 3, M. 4 R 5 L use a phonetic alphabet of consonants and consonant sounds to translate hard to remember numbers into an easily to recall mental pictures thus 57 4, 4, 3 becomes locker room use the time just before you go to sleep preferably while relaxing in bed to commit things to memory not every woman is as old slippers can manage to look like Cinderella. Not every woman in an old slippers can manage to look like Cinderella. Don Marquise. Wear flattering clothes. Your clothing presents an image that shouts volumes to others about your attitudes, accessibility, and your ability. Even through your judgments through people made from which vary person to person to ensure that you make a good impression, there's a certain sensible guideline that you can follow with your confidence. Yes, you can. Meet the expectations of people around you for your attire. Don't shock, disappoint, or embarrass them. Don't break the dress code where you are. Wear and make the feel whatever makes you feel comfortable. If you are at ease, you're most, most likely to make others feel that way. Dress according to the impression that you want to give for mall formal informal intellectual practical staid fun loving wealthy poor conservative risk taking contemporary old fashioned dress like people from which you want to create rapport make them feel like you're one of the gang wear from which other think oh, you look good in this requires to keep a close track of the compliments from which you get and wear certain outfits combinations and colors in business settings wear black and navy to build credibility gold grain gray and brown won't flatter most skin tones pale pastels can work loud ones are gaudy light shades of blue gray beige can look nice and when they may not be power colors but they may not be power colors take care of your clothing when signs of wear appear relegant in items of casual settings avoid trendy colors and fashions that will become outdated at a year later buy the most expensive clothing you can afford from a clothier whose advice you trust to enter one's own self it is necessary to go armed to the teeth Paul Valerie, see yourself as others do. Success comes from your ability to influence and motivate others through your behavior. You can find out what others think of your behavior. Yes, you can get feedback. 
Look and listen to the feedback you've already received and study the body language of other people from which they're of your presence. Take note of their tone, voice, compare to the tone and voice and use theirs. Think back and feedback from received from over the years of compliments and criticisms from which trends to themes in, the fee in this feedback. If someone is reluctant to comment openly on your behavior, bring up a name of a third person you both know. Ask what you think the other person would say about my behavior. Under the supervision of a licensed psychologist, take one of the many personality inventories, preference tests, and skill assessments that are available. Videotape a presentation you make or meeting that you lead. Review it with some knowledgeable and honest enough to give you helpful feedback. When you're out and about, check your appearance in the mirrors. Take a peek at what you show the world. Listen to yourself as you speak. Limit thinking and worrying about what you're going to say next and instead focus on the words and the way that you say them. The most savage controversies are those about matters as to which there is no good evidence either way. Win in arguments. Many people get trapped in debates that they cannot win. Not sure of what they're going to say, not anticipating what their adversary will say, failing to define their terms, and not even sure of what the argument's all about. Can you avoid these snares? Yes, you can. Pick your fights. Confront others from which you win, from when you can predict at least a draw. Develop a reputation at someone who admits to being wrong when your errors are revealed to you. This encourages others to believe your assertions. Know your adver adversary. Prepare for likely taxes and plan to press suspected hot buttons to get your way. Know why you're arguing. Do you have your need to win, to work off your aggressions, to establish pecking order in your own barnyard? And you have your reasons and make sense? Do your reasons make sense? Provide an alternative for anything that may be an arguing against. Don't knock down the ideas of others with having something to put in their place. Let the other person speak first. Your adversary will become a better listener and you will gain clues to what it will take to convince him or her. Base your arguments on facts, use documented statistics, quote respected people, cite universal principles, keep your cool while revealing a well-modulated sense of annoyance, even anger. Save sarcasm, incredulity, caustic humor for the toughest and most uncooperative adversaries. Develop a win-win mentality. Aim to meet both of your needs and those of others in the room rather than defending one-sided or self-serving position. Never try to win by destroying an opponent. Attack issues, not people. In business, you don't deserve. In business, you don't get what you deserve. You get what you negotiate. Negotiate successfully. In an ideal world, everyone gets from which they deserve and they the world would live and which one would give and take. You can learn how to get, give the minimum away of the maximum return. You can learn how to give the minimum away for the maximum return. Yes, you can. Set a friendly, cooperative, trusting tone at the, at the outset. Yes, you can strive for a win-win outcome. Any resolution where you walk away with all the marbles sets the stage for future problems. Ask lots of questions and listen to the answer. Get to know the other person as well as you can. Knowledge of the other person's needs, expectations, preferences, peculiarities, aspirations, pressures, strategies will tell you what you need to do and offer to reach an understanding. Find an agreement that meets the needs while meeting other person's needs at least cost to you. Know your bottom line. Don't give any more than your maximum or accept any less than your minimum. Stay calm and rational during deliberations. As soon as either of you become emotional, call for a break don't appear anxious for a solution don't make snap judgments someone may make a new proposal when you reach an impulse do of the following take a recess summarize your process restate the implications of not reaching an accord suggest a new approach talk about how you feel give up something in trade ask these helpful questions what else what do you have in mind what's your offer is there possibility for me? What's the possibility for more? Is there possibility for more? What else do I need to know about this? What if I were to offer? Is the offer clear? What do you need? What will it take to get an agreement? Never go up or come down without getting something in return. I shall tell you a great secret, my friend. Do not wait for the last judgment. It takes place every day. Albert Camus. Act ethically act ethically
illegal behavior violates the law. Unethical behavior violates the trust in the principle or an acceptance practice. Acting unethically means taking advantage of the kindness and weakness and ignorance of others for your own personal gain. You can overcome the temptation to be unscrupulous. Yes, you can. Ask yourself for those two questions. What options do I have others than the unethical one? If I succumb to the temptation, will I be able to look at my spouse, friend, coworker, child, and so on in the eye and say what I did? Yes, I can. Recognize the unethical behavior will be observed by others, some from whom will lower their opinion of me. Don't be seduced into practicing situation ethics. Ethics are standard that don't change. They are unaltered by events. Example, you cannot just justify committing a wrong because of a string on a bad luck of a response in a host to inequities perpetrating against you. Hold dearly to your own principles. Remember the pains of consciousness you felt the last time you gave into a temptation. Be assured of agony will return if you compromise your values. Before you do something you regret, talk to people of those opinions you respect. Ask them for the reasons from why you should not carry through with your intent. Close your eyes and visualize the unethical action you are about to take. Make it grow very large, monstrously so. Get very bright, even blinding, and make it a screeching, almost deafening sound. Now shrink that size, kill the brightness, and snuff the sound by moving the picture away from you until it becomes a speck and disappears. Consider it gone. Read Ayn Rand's The Fountainhead. Could you have stood up as well as Howard Rourke did? When I'm getting ready to persuade a man, I spend one-third of the time thinking about myself, what I'm going to say, and two-thirds of the time thinking about him and what he's going to say. Abraham Lincoln. Sell your ideas persuasively. If you want more success in winning in cooperations from others and getting them to go along with your suggestions, there's a list for you. With the help of the tips below, you can improve your ability to market your ideas. Yes, you can store up credibility from which you need it by being known of someone who cares for others, who makes reasonable requests, and for whose word can be trusted. Know exactly what you're asking for, what new behavior you expect, what your precision expectations, what long-term implications should the other person understand before agreeing to comply. Recognize why you are making this request. What's your ultimate goal? Will it find the fact and be achieved a request you're about to make? Or like making being asking just for the wrong time? Are you asking... Or might you be asking for this in the wrong time? Or, you're asking, or are you asking for the wrong thing? Be prepared to pay choice and pay price. What will this new behavior eventually cost in time? Money, personal involvement, following through, negative reactions by others, altered results in related areas, expected return of a favor in another behavior of support, or in response to the person who cooperates with you? Ask for it. Don't hint. Wish or wait for other persons to figure out what you want? Just ask for it. Get it to the point. Get to the point. Paint the exact picture you see. If, if you... It, Paint the exact picture you see of your need and believe that you'll get a yes so that you can ask convincingly. Be certain you're asking the right person, someone who can help, someone who has the power to deliver. Show benefits. Demonstrate the other person in the most vivid language possible and value of fulfilling your request. Reveal the ways in which your actions you're requesting will either remove a pain from the person's life or introduce a new pleasure to it. A certain amount of opposition is a great help to man. Kites rise against, not with, the wind. Overcome objections to your ideas. When you ask people to do something, expect a reason or two why it can't or don't want to do it. You can learn to overcome objections to your ideas and possibly even turn reluctance into an advantage. Yes, you can. Know the... Know the people who sell to you well that you can build solutions to their predictable objections into your sales pitch. Know the people who you sell to. Know the people who you sell to so that you can build solutions to their predictable objections into your sales pitch. State the objection you expect them to raise. Affirm that it's a valid concern. Then while the look of us spectators of the objection rather than owners of it, dismantle it, showing how the proposal eliminates it as a problem. When the unexpected objections come up, listen to it. Be certain you understand it and emphasize with the other person's concern before proceeding to address it. Don't attack those who object to your ideas. Ask them. Substantiate the assumptions behind their resistance. 
restate each objection you hear and ensure that you understand it repeating objection back to its owner often weakens it don't argue become angry or get defensive remain calm get maintained visible enthusiasm for your idea remain calm get maintained visible enthusiasm for your idea test objections to be sure that you know what you're up against ask this if i can prove that all take care of that will you go along with my idea if the answer is yes you should know what you have to do to overcome the objection if the answer is no you haven't yet uncovered the real objection answer each objection with the fact that you believe will dismantle it demonstrate your idea is not invalidated demonstrate why your idea is not invalidated confirm with your objections that their concerns have been addressed if you believe an objection does kill your proposal, ask for time to get back to the drawing board to reshape it. When objectors refuse to accept your solution, ask them to provide their own. Provide their own. Many times they will. I'm going to stop putting things off starting tomorrow. Sam Levinson Stop procrastinating. Although putting off an unpleasant task from time to time is not serious, chronic stalling is a problem. You waste time worrying about what you have to do. Your mind magnifies beyond all the reality, the pain, and all the experience by doing it. <clears throat> and you risk letting down people who are counting on you. You can get things done on time. Yes, you can spend the next week invoking 24-hour rule. Respond to each new stimulus, mail, request, phone calls, so on, within 24 hours. When the new task looks overwhelming, start it immediately, even if you can only spend a few minutes on it. Break every difficult task into manageable pieces. Work on a piece each day. Stop thinking about how uncomfortable you think you feel while performing an undesirable task. Start thinking about how good you feel when the job will be done. Reward yourself for making progress on a challenging project. Give yourself bonuses by doing something that you really like. Write a schedule for completing your work. Keep it on highly visible places. Make public commitments by starting and finishing scary tasks. It's easier to get yourself down than to embarrass yourself in front of others. Recognize that you reduce your stress level every time you accomplish one one of your to do's put this book down start working on the most nagging task in your backlog don't turn the next page until you feel good about the progress that you've made when you're through changing you're through Bruce Barton accept change three things in life are certain death taxes and change and of these three, most you handle the first two better than the third. You can become the most positive by coping, coping with change in your life and learn to use it in your advantage. Yes, you can recognize the resistance to change comes from the fear of loss. Whenever you need to change troubles you, ask yourself, what are you afraid of losing? Is it control, prestige, self-esteem, closeness, freedom, comfort, comfort, income, identity, the root you're identify the root of your resistance and take steps to overcome it accept the discomfort caused by ambiguity and uncertainty and a natural byproduct of change identify the drawbacks of not changing what will result if you fail to solve this problem exploit this opportunity only comply with the requirements isn't the status quo far more costly than transition is the status quo far more costly than the transition identify the gain associated with the changing don't allow your obstinacy your abstinency to obscure the real advantages of moving from present state to the new one if your reasons for change are not clear to you ask those who are initiating it don't make a snap judgment about its value give yourself a few days to become both emotionally and intellectually committed to it write down five advantages of the change before you allow yourself to dwell on its disadvantages take on positive views of life and many people who are willing to change have in common an example life is rewarding there's an important lesson to be learned from challenges disruption the natural element of an evolving world and change presents opportunities to grow recall that two symbols in the Chinese ideograph for change signify threat and opportunity those are the Chinese ideograph symbols for change many people's tombstones should read died at 30 buried at 60 Nicholas Murray Butler create a meaningful legacy a recent study people over the age of 95 reported one of the greatest regrets in the future was failing to 
be behind something of worth or humanity, even the limited financial resources, you can leave the world a better place. Yes, you can raise positive children who want to make a valuable contribution to society. Teach them everything you know. Be a positive role model to the children in your life. Make whatever gift you can afford to the Philophonic Foundation. The contribution will enlarge its endowments, enabling your money to work for good for a long time. Make a whatever gift you can afford to any organization whose goal is to educate youth to leading productivity, health, and lives of moral lives. Fun camperships for disadvantaged children. Find opportunities to work for young people. Volunteer at your school, church, synagogue. Get involved with other organizations such as scouts and benefit adults of tomorrow. Develop your teaching skills. Look for opportunities within organizations to train new employees so that they can advance in their careers, feel better about themselves, and accomplish more for the customers in the organization. Will your vital organs to an organ bank tell your family about your decision? During your lifetime, work with the preservation of an environment. Process less garbage and recycle what you can. Speak out against social ills, moral evils, and human suffering. Be a gadfee for good. Be a gadfee for good. Chapter 3. Communicate effectively. If thou thinkest twice before thou speakest once, thou wilt speak twice the better for it. William Penn Wisdom is the reward you get for a lifetime of listening when you have preferred to talk. Doug Larson. Listen better. Someone in your life may need more of your attention, more of your concern, more of your ears. You can understand this person better and make him or her feel better by being a good listener. Yes, you can set a personal goal for yourself of becoming a better listener. Accept nothing less than success. Remain equally open to every idea you hear. Hold your fire. Don't stereotype the speaker and don't make snap judgments on the value of what's being said until the speaker has finished. Final personal value in hearing and being entertained by the stories of others. Prepare to listen by thinking about the speaker in advance. Shut up. Speak less. Bite your tongue. Say to yourself, I am going to empty this person of every emotion, thought, and opinion on this topic before I reveal mine. Listen for content rather than judging and therefore becoming distracted by the speaker's delivery style. Look at the speaker's body language and listen to the tone of voice to pick up meaning beyond the words being spoken. Fight any visual, oral, sensual distraction give the speaker steady eye contact and get into any attentive body posture focus on the speaker's message mentally summarize weigh the evidence ask clarifying questions when someone begins to speak pick up a pencil make it a listening stick by squeezing it with your thumb and the eraser don't interpret until the person stops talking then release the pencil and allow the other person to use it while you talk if all my talents and powers were to be taken from me by some inscrutable providence, I had my choice of keeping but one power. I would unhesitatingly ask to be allowed to keep my power of speaking, for through it I would quickly recover all of the rest. Daniel Webster, speak with impact. Some speakers command attention. They sound convincing, authoritative, and credible. This discourse has none of the self facing qualities that too many people allow to sap the energy from their ideas can you read your conversation of power robbing phrases yes you can don't discount your ideas before you express them you may not think much about this idea but don't discontent and discount yourself before you give your opinion while I'm not an expert on this topic don't qualify the message with wishy-washy modifiers sometimes but not always this is true don't speak permission don't seek permission to speak I wonder if I might be allowed to say something don't rehash, repeat, or paraphrase unnecessarily. State your idea once concisely and directly. Don't connect tag questions to the end of your statement. This is an important idea, don't you think? Don't demean or belittle your listeners. Let me put it this terms that you can understand. Let me put it in terms you can understand. Avoid cliches. You won't impress people by reminding them that you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink it. Use positive statements. Change. I don't mind helping you to. I would enjoy helping you. 
Use positive state and change. I don't mind helping you to I would enjoy helping you. Avoid participle forms. Say, I plan to do it, not I'm planning to do it. I plan to do it. Avoid the passive and personal voice. Replace a decision was made with we decided. Use the word you three times and every time you use the word I. Use the word you three times for every time you use the word I. Suit the action to the word, the word to the action. William Shakespeare. Send strong nonverbal messages. As little as 10% of the impact of your spoken message is carried by the words you utter. As much as 40% achieved is by vocal, tone, inflection, emphasis is pitch, rhyme, volume, rate. 40% is achieved by your vocals. Only 10% is impact of your spoken message. More than 50% comes from your body language, eye, face, hair, gestures, posture, cosmetic accessories, clothings, actions, use of space. Can you harness the 90%? Yes, you can. Study others' nonverbal messages. Note their impact. Get feedback on vocals or body language. Have some observe you in a meeting. Record your voice. Videotape yourself making a presentation. Look people in the eyes when you speak to them and when you speak to you and when they speak to you, groom yourself carefully in the morning. Many people will judge you on the value by your looks. Dress to meet expectations of important people. The look and quality of your attire should be slightly better than contemporaries. Wear what others have said you look good in when you need to influence them. Correct your posture, lift your collarbone one inch. Never point a finger at anyone. Be careful of other poor potentially off-putting gestures. Give a firm, non-vice tight or noodle soft handshake. Send positive messages with the settings in which you live and work. Is your desk messy? Is your car clean? What impressions do others get entering your home? Nonverbals show how you feel inside and determine how you feel inside. Walk with your head up and you'll feel up. Wear your finest duds and you'll feel great. And get yourself excited. The ability to speak is a shortcut to distinction. It puts a man in the limelight, raises his head and his shoulders above the crowd, and the man who can speak acceptably is usually given the credit for the ability of all proportion to which he really possesses. Lowell Thomas Speak eloquently. A good speaker is not the one who remembers what to say, but rather what will be remembered. This person is expressive, articulate, and well-spoken. You can learn such eloquence. Yes, you can speak with eloquence. A well-timed, well-fitting quotation adds validity to your ideas and makes you look well-versed. Purchase a good book of quotations for the reference library. Memorize one quote a day using your typical communication situations. Post a favorite quote of the month in your car, kitchen, office. List the classic speeches of all time. Examples, Martin Luther King, I Have a Dream, John F. Kennedy, Inaugural Address, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, Day in a Finfamily. Infamy. Note the rhetorical devices they used to rive and rivet audiences. Use repetitions to grab your audiences. An example, Martin Luther King Jr.'s use of I Have a Dream. Use repetition to grab your audiences. Use antithesis. Antithesis to produce memorable effects. An example, John F. Kennedy asked, Ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you could do for your country. Use antithesis antithesis to produce memorable effects use alliteration to get attention an example Gerald Ford claiming my record is one of progress not platitudes performance not promises alliterations to get attention use the rule of three when ideas are strung together in a series of threes the impact almost always exceeds any of the strings of two or four or more the second sentence is an introduction above would have been weakened as if it would added the word fluent to the series use rhetorical questions to win the audience over start a seminar on the use of eloquence by saying who among you is fully satisfied with your ability to stir others into action words have weight sound appearance it is only by considering these that you can write a sentence that is good to look at and good to listen to w somerset mogham 
Choose powerful words. The well-chosen word given your speech, your letter, your manuscript, the power to attract, mesmerize, and persuade. You can use words that get the best results. Yes, you can. Avoid infamisms, words that make concepts more socially correct but weaker. Don't perspire when you should sweat. Leave no doubt as to your intent. Do it as soon as you can. May tell me I can wait until I'm good and ready. Leave no doubt as to your content. Do it as soon as you can. May tell me I can't wait until I'm good and ready. Avoid the technical language of your profession, the slang of your social group, the idioms of your hometown with those that won't understand. Forget any worn out phrase you've ever learned. Don't remind us that you can't tell a book by you can't tell a book by its cover. Favor shorter words. Don't inquire about an opinion. Ask it. Don't utilize what you can use. Increase the power of your suggestion with specific colorful language. Your claim of interest won't carry the same weight as your excitement or your aspirations. Speak in an active voice. My love for you is shown by isn't as strong as I show my love for you by. Don't overuse the verb noun or adjective in the same letter or speech. Example, you can give faster rest with the breakneck, snappy, swift, quick, speedy, or brisk. You can give fast a rest with breakneck, snappy, swift, quick, speedy, or brisk. Use friendly contractions. An example, I'll for I will in all but the most formal communications. Overcome sexist language. Use the term girl only if they use a boy in the same or the next sentence. Avoid the generic he when you mean a man or a woman find substitutes for a man and men words ending with an example say male carrier instead of mailman if a woman has a professional title an example doctor use it a great many people think that polysyllables are a sign of intelligence improve your vocabulary what if your carpenters showed up without any tools? They'd probably strike you as incompetent amateurs in the same way you'd have a hard time projecting a polished professional image with a deficient with the deficient vocabulary. Your words are the plain, chisel, drill, level, sandpaper you use to form your ideas. You can shape them in just the way you need to to get an impact you want. Yes, you can. Don't equate enhancing your vocabulary with learning those 14-letter words that challenge you on an SAT. Having a powerful vocabulary is using the right words to get the desired result. Long, unfamiliar words only confuse and frustrate the receivers of your messages. Read voraciously. Consume one book a week. Alternate those that read for fun and for those that list of great books. Read newspapers and magazines daily. Devour newspaper columns and word usage. Play the word games in newspapers, magazines. Become fun and a fan of crossword puzzles in the New York Times. Read any of the books written by noticed or noted wordsmith William Sapphire. Read any of the books written by noted wordsmith William Sapphire. Read The Art of Plain Talk by Rudolf Fleisch. Keep an excellent dictionary and thesaurus in your personal library or on your own word processor. Play Scrabble or some sort of newer word board game. Learn one new word a day. Find an opportunity to use it the next day. Exercise your vocabulary at every opportunity. Join a group where you'll be calling upon to speak and write. Listen to great speakers. Learn from the way they used and learn from their use of the King's English. The difference between the almost word... The difference between the almost right word and the right word tis the difference between the lightning bug and the lightning. Mark Twain Reduce communication errors. English is a language in which it's easy to make mistakes, grammar usage, pronunciation, and spelling. But you can make fewer errors. Yes, you can. Don't say, I will try and do that. Try to do it. Don't say, I could care less, when you couldn't care less. Don't say, between you and I, me fellow's proposition. Don't say, can I help you? You mean may. Don't say, I did good on the test if you did well. Don't say, he sent it, don't say, he sent it to Jan and myself. Me is better. Don't claim that you would be of when you would have. Don't say each member must do their share. One correct way to avoid his or her is to here is to change the subject to all members. Don't wait on a report when you should wait for it. 
don't mistakenly feel strongly or badly about something you should feel strong or bad about don't lay down when you mean to lie down don't use irregardless regardless is correct use the preferred pronunciation of harass leisure nuclear realtor and research check the dictionary don't misspell accommodate benefited cancelled changeable committed consensus disappoint embarrass etiquette excel existence grateful adverent ad advertent judgment liaison memento minuscule occasion occurrence omission prerogative perseverance recommend referred resistance seize separate supersede threshold tomorrow or withhold don't say you're disinterested in the results when you're uninterested in them make thyself a craftsman in speech for thereby thou shalt gain the upper hand ancient egyptian tomb inscription make thyself a mast craftsman in speech for thereby thou shalt gain the upper hand improve your speaking voice radio announcers are hired based on the quality of their speaking voices although many of them were born to utter resonant tones most also employ strategies to improve the way they sound you too can use these strategies yes you can if you want to overcome a speech impediment first consider whether it's truly hindrance to your effectiveness a professional speaker we know stutters without any loss in an audience impact get an expert assessment from a speech pathologist listen to yourself on an audio tape what overall impressions do you create with your voice do you vary from vocal impact suit the message or do you speak and bring a monotone or a repetitious sing-song pattern be prepared to detest the sound of your voice on a tape repeat a sentence eight times alternately voice voicing joy fear contentment anger embarrassment sadness surprise confusion try you and I see that differently you and I see that differently have a listener give you feedback on the degree of the emotion you communicate create contrast with your voice alternate between high and low low and soft excited and reserved to highlight points from which you want your audience to remember use silence and pauses in your voice the same way you use punctuation in written communication articulate distinctly make a special effort to pronounce the final consonant of every word practice speaking from deep in your diaphragm create vibrations in your vocal cords don't talk through your nose take care of your voice a raw throat needs rest and and humidification sip hot water or tea with honey no lemon chew raisins why don't the feather who says I'm not a speech maker let it go in that instead of given a demonstration Frank McKinley Hubbard prepare compelling presentations successful presenters know how to organize speeches that are fun to deliver and full of impact you can learn their secrets yes you can base your speech on a clear purpose stated in terms of how you plan to change that's right change the audience recognize nearly every presentation you make is a persuasive one intended to get your audience to behave or think a different to behave or think differently fit your approach to the mood needs knowledge expectations socioeconomics experience and self-image of your audience research the topic thoroughly gather abundant evidence and statistics statistics and other supporting material brainstorm all the ideas you might have present write these random all over large, large sheets of paper representing a core dump of your thinking on this topic study the sheet and add ideas in several days finally draw lines connecting like ideas and select the three to five main points from which has best used to organize your material into a convincing argument create a set of notes containing trigger phrases not sentences that will enable you to deliver the speech with your eyes and your audience much at the same time with constant awareness of where you are with the speech ones that will enable you to deliver the speech with your eyes on the audience much of the time yet with constant awareness of where you are in the speech create set notes containing trigger phrases 
Place vivid mental images of key points on attractive and easily seen visuals such as slides, charts, handouts, models, demonstrations, or write and draw on a board. The vivid mental images or key points on attractive, easily seen visuals, slides, or charts. Rehearse the presentation until you're comfortable with it. Arrange the room for maximum advantage and be sure to learn how to operate any equipment you plan to use. Speeches, like babies, are easy to conceive but hard to deliver. Deliver compelling presentations. Gives two people the same speech to deliver and one will have the audience more motivated to act. Can you consistently convince your audience that your ideas are valuable to them? Yes, you can. Open with enthusiasm. Deliver an intention getting interesting arousal, rapport building kickoff. And tell them that you're going to tell them. Reveal the speech's organization early on. Add some humor by sharing personal stories, not by telling jokes or poking fun at your audience. Never open up with an apology such as, I'm not an expert on, or if I had more time to prepare, or I'll be as brief as I can. Maintain eye contact with people in the audience. Avoid oral distractions such as unnecessarily utterances, ah, uh, um, or you know. Throat clearing, repetitive phrases, and incorrect use of language. Avoid physical distractions such as poor posture, hair twirling, rattling your pocket chain, swaying, leaning on lectern, placing with a pen or a pen, pen or a marker, or doing anything repetitively. Eject vocal variety. Change in inflection, pitch, volume, emphasis, speed into your delivery. Tie your conviction and confidence to your words. Control podium anxiety with the techniques offered on page 97. Stay within the allotted time. Better yet, finish a little sooner than people expect. Close with a brief, brief summary and a high-energy finish that motivates the audience to an action. The mind is a wonderful thing. It starts to work the minute you are born and never stops until you get up to speak in public. John Mason Brown. Gain confidence as a speaker. More than one opinion survey has shown that speaking before a group is our number one lifetime fear. But although it may afflict you as much as a disease, you can overcome stage fright. Yes, you can accept the podium anxiety as a motivating force that even the most talented performers experience. Prepare so completely that your expert knowledge makes you feel invulnerable and unstoppable. Study your audience so thoroughly that you are sure that you know how to push their hot buttons. Rehearse your presentations from the very lectern in the very room where you deliver it. In the evening before you retire, visualize success. See and hear yourself presenting the great confidence and enormous triumph. Enjoy a standing ovation. Evolve your audience actively in your presentation from the beginning. Get them up on their feet and invite them to the front of the room to register opinions on a tote board. Have them tell you their portions of their presentations. They hope you'll emphasize. Share with your audience the responsibility to kick off a great speech. Use overhead transparencies or other audio visuals to give the audience something to look at besides you. Expand a burst of energy by doing something strenuous just prior to stepping to the lecture. Take a brisk was walk. Now climb a few flights of stairs. Use the squeeze technique to draw nervous energy out of your body through your arms, fiercely, fiercely clutching the sides of your lectern. Crush a flip chart marker in your fist. Pinch your fingertips together with your arms down at your side. It usually takes me more than three weeks to prepare a good impromptu speech. Mark Twain Learn to deliver impromptu presentations. Speaking with the benefits of advanced preparation, carefully planned notes, and eye-popping visual aids is one thing. Speaking without warning is quite another. Are you prepared to meet this communication challenge? Can you sound and look polished without warning? Yes, you can. Read everything you can and get your hands on to have a presence of a mind from which something intelligent you have something intelligent to say. Keep up with the current events and develop in your field. Keep up a dozen or so of your favorite Memorize quotations at hand. Use them to spice up an unprepared remark. And when asked to speak, use the rule of three. Think immediately at the angle from which you want to take the topic. Put three main ideas in your head about the topic. These might reflect three challenges, three benefits, three methods, or three of anything else. You can also pose three questions. You will answer it.
in your talk. For example, what, where, why, as you stand up, list your three main points, then return to each one to elaborate. For example, an impromptu speech on buying shoes might begin. When buying a pair of shoes, consider price, quality, and style. The price you pay, practice the rule of three from time to time to remain adept at it. The rule of three. Know that you look and sound good, feeling certain that you will succeed. Be bored with my confidence, not defeated by doubt. Keep it short and don't stray from the subject. It's better to leave them wanting more than wishing you had talked less. Reread and practice the preceding piece of advice. If any man wishes to write in a clear style, let him first be clear in his thoughts. Johann Wolfgang von Goethe overcome writer's block getting started may be the most difficult task when you sit down to write you have all the ideas in your head but you're just not sure how to introduce them or organize them you are suffering from writer's block but you could find a cure yes you can ask yourself why are you writing this report letter chapter what do you want the reader to think about in the result of reading your work as soon as you have the answer to this question take a check take a crack at opening Skim paragraphs into a magazine, newspaper, or a book for an inspiring literacy device. Set aside half an hour each day for writing as a means of reducing the overall intimidation factor. Write first drafts freely and quickly with little time concerned to punctuation, spelling, neatness, or grammar. Construct a storyboard as an idea is for your project to come to you. Jot down three times five cards on three by five cards. Tack them on the wall. Ideas as you begin to see relationships among the cards change the positions. As soon as your shape of your approach becomes clear, start writing. Talk about your project with a friend or an intro or a tape recorder. And the more you talk, the more the ideas in your head will arrange themselves into a pattern in your mind's eye. Place who, what, where, when, why, and how down the left margin of your page, spaced about an inch part. Write in the answers, then rearrange them into the outline and they can work from form. Don't try to compose the introduction until the rest of the piece is written. Write the conclusion first, then work on getting there. In composing a general rule, run your pen through every other word you have written. You have no idea what vigor will give your will give your style. Sidney Smith, write persuasively. Write letters, memos, and reports that sell and tell ideas to others. But we're not always as persuasive as we want to be. Can you do a better job of convincing others in writing? Yes, you can. In the document, answer these questions for the reader. Why should I read this? Why am I being asked to read this? Why should I do it? What is in it for me? Write with you attitude. Put the reader in the message. Limit one. Limit I statements. Put you. Put you attitude. Put the reader in the message. Use the opening paragraph you get in your foot in the door. Grab your attention, squeak interest, and build a psychological bond with your reader. Support your arguments with evidence that is clear, credible, and compelling. Write in the language of the reader. Limit negative statements instead of telling readers what they can't, what they can and can't do. Tell me what they can do. Use words that are sharp, crisp, colorful, honest, direct, and specific. Don't try to impress readers by using words they can't understand. Go over your first rough draft thoroughly to be sure to eliminate completely all the unnecessary words and phrases and that can weaken your entire message. State good news at the beginning of your message. Withhold bad news until the end. Close with a specific request. Let the reader know exactly what you want and how they can carry it out. Read and use the elements of style by, Str by Strunk and White and the Little English Handbook by Corbett. For a few brief days, the orchards and are white with blossoms they soon turn to fruit and else float away useless and wasted upon the gentle breeze so it will be with present feelings they must be depended into decision or be entirely dissipated by delay theodore theodore Koehler. express your feelings honestly as children we learn how to deal with our feelings perhaps lessons we've got was not to be honest about your reactions to others and how others do. As a result, you may have grown up walking on eggshells, afraid to speak your mind. You can be more free with your feelings. Yes, you can. If you learn to hide your feelings, you may realize that you've lost so far, that what you've lost so far more than you've gained over the years. If so, get mad enough about those losses to follow through with these ideas. Recognize that being assertive is not the same as being aggressive. Assertiveness is insisting that you be heard. Aggressiveness is insisting that you get your way. Not everyone should get their way, but everyone, including you, should be heard. 
When you feel victimized, say so right away. Delaying the message only makes the eventual confrontation more difficult and increases your anger and frustration. Realize that every time you withhold a statement about your feelings, you drive a nail into a coffin of a relationship. Sublimit sublimating feelings never go away without scarring. You'll begin acting negatively towards a person for reasons that neither knew you nor you neither of you will readily understand never attribute to malice that which can be explained in incompetence give others credible credit for stupidity giving others credit for stupidity by stating your feelings may point out behavior the other person is not aware of and would be willing to correct pick someone with whom you'll share the unexpressed feelings do it constructively tactfully and honestly if you get a bad reaction to sharing your feelings analyze the experience learn from the result and vow to do it better next time don't take it as proof that you should never again tell others how you feel chapter four build relationships the best time to make friends is before you need them Ethel Barrymore, Ethel Barrymore, friends have all things in common, Plato, develop immediate rapport, rapport is the common bond you create between yourself and others, this bond enables them to identify with you, encourages them to feel better about you, and prepares you to do a better job of influencing them, you can create immediate rapport with almost anyone, yes you can, greet people with a smile and a warm hello, when you say hello and goodbye with people, use their names, learn how to pronounce correctly, and the name that they want to be called. Ask to find out and spell it correctly when you put it in writing. Make a genuine inquiry about the family or about another topic important to them. Show interest in their interest. Dress as they do. Spend more time listening than talking. Continue to probe. Get them to talk about what's on their mind. Search for common passions. Examples, golfing, fishing, child, re child rearing, reading, antique collecting. When you find one, explore it thoroughly. Ask people for advice on matters in which they consider themselves to be expert and use it listen to the person's tone of voice is it happy sad excited lethargic monotonic ver varied agitated calm loud soft high pitched low pitched duplicate it to send a powerful subconscious acknowledgement of empathy observe the per person's body language especially eye contact posture and gestures match it as closely as you can without being obvious to send a powerful subconscious acknowledgement of empathy the only way to have a friend is to be one. Ralph Waldo Emerson Choose reliable friends. Friends nurture us when we are in pain, console us when we grieve, and share us in our delight when we rejoice. Do you choose friends and enrich your life, or which from way you want to attract those to let you down, weigh you down, and take more than they give? You can do a better job of gaining friends. Yes, you can. Analyze your past failed relationships, answering these questions. What went wrong? Why? Why did the role play into the failure? What will you do differently this time? What lessons have you learned about how to pick friends? Work gradually into friendships. Don't commit unconditional trust and undying allegiance without witnessing an expressive track record of reliability. Don't force friendships. Let rapport re evolve naturally. Let's be friends is a nice sentiment, but it rarely serves an inspiration for a long-term relationship. Have reliable friends by being a reliable friend. Enable the people in your life to count on you as much as you want them to be able to count on you want to be able to count on them. Apply the knowledge that there are two kinds of people in the world, enemies and friends, and the difference between them is that enemies make good make a, make you laugh while friends are willing to make you cry. Choose friends who will be honest in giving you feedback you may not get anywhere else. Insist that friendships be a two-way street. Be wary in acquaintances. Be wary of acquaintances who get a lot more from you than you get from them. Surround yourself with givers. Pay the price in terms of time, energy, and commitment in order to have closer friends. There is the same difference in a person before and after he is in love as there is an unlighted lamp and one that is burning. The lamp was there and it was a good lamp, but now is shedding light too, and that is the real function. Vincent Van Gogh, build a loving relationship. Like any organic system, a human relationship is subject to entropy, meaning that it's always in a state of decay. With a little effort, 
it can counteract the tendencies for your love and relationship to fall apart. Yes, you can create psychological intimacy, share your innermost experiences and deepest feelings with your person you love, talk daily about your impressions of the people and events of encounterment, reveal your most important life goals and share your reactions to the triumphs and failures of experience, maintain physical intimacy, hug and kiss in private, hold hands in public, spend time and day discussing how each other's lives are in your work, your family's hobbies and other areas of life you may not always experience together. Make each other laugh, especially in a mature relationship where have you you may have forgotten to the importance of being funny express love is the way of importance to your partner some needs to see proof of love for example gifts and things you buy some need to hear proof of love for example I love you saying I love you giving compliments some need to feel proof of love for example through hugs and kisses tell your partner which of these expressions you need each of them make a list of the others you can do to reinforce the feelings of being cared for do at least one thing on your lovers list every day view all the flaws you see in your lover as a coal that hasn't yet turned into a diamond don't plan on hope to change the thing if you can't accept it what you see is what you get leave the relationship before it's too late no one can make you feel small without your consent Eleanor Roosevelt protect yourself from abuse some people become involved in relationships from which they feel emotionally victimized no one should put up with abuse in any form there are ways to gain freedom and miss from mistreatment you can make one of them work for you yes you can refuse to enable chronic abusers by accepting their apologies instead say that apology may be real for you but it's not real for me the only thing real for me would be never to experience that again refuse to enable chronic abusers from making accusers for their their behaviors to others refuse to enable chronic abusers by protecting them from consequences of their behavior allow them to feel whatever pain result from their actions set an absolute limit on how much you will take tell abusers what will happen if their behavior continues and follow through on your promise let go of unrealistic dreams of a relationship when others are unwilling to or unable to rep re reciprocate once the pain they cause becomes overwhelming give them a final chance then cut your losses with remorse but not guilt don't become codependent who feels that abuse is something you can control pity your attackers that's right pity them once you're able to feel sorry for them you have such an awful lives that they need to treat you so badly you could free yourself emotionally from the effects of their mistreatment pathetic figures can't push your buttons memorize the serenity prayer God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference how many dispute how many a dispute could have been defeated in a single paragraph if the disputants had dared to define their terms Aristotle Disagree effectively. Conflict is the inevitability byproduct of relationships, both personal and professional. It's not a question of whether or not you fight with others, but how you'll fight. You can learn how to disagree more agreeably and successfully. Yes, you can think win-win because you're not win in the long run for another person walks away humiliated. You'll pay somewhere down the line. Focus on issues, not personalities, and remain calm. Name-calling, hurling accusations make a bad situation worse. The more upset you get, the less sense you make and less credibility you have. Listen to others' assertions before making yours. Once they've spoken their piece, they will be a better you. They will be better listeners, and will be, and you will be armed with information to use when it's your turn to speak. You may even hear some valid points. Ask lots of questions to learn why others believe what they are saying is true. Limit your description of situations to what you can observe, and opposed to the summise and the surmise of suspect. Deal in fact, not innuendo. Deal in facts, not innuendo. When you assert your views, state why you believe what you believe. Monitor and control the nonverbal communications. Don't tense up, finger point, scowl, or get in the person's face. Maintain eye contact without glaring. Fix the future rather than rehash the past. Think, think long term. Ask. What will it take to keep this from happening again? Keep the focus on your comparative needs, not your opposing positions. Engage with the other person and search for creative ways to meet both sets of needs to reach a common ground. Most of us would rather be ruined by praise than saved by criticism. Norman Vincent Peale Accept criticism. Only martyrs and masochists enjoy censor. The rest of us respond like children, eating spinach. I know it's good for us, but we don't like it. 
There are ways for more to be open to criticism. Can you swallow your spinach? Yes, you can. Determine the criticizer's motive. If there's a devious or harmful think, but don't say this, you have a problem that I can't help you with, and dismiss the criticism. Agree that the least half of the reprimands given the world are valid, and that you will probably get your share of them. Listen closely for the truth in what you hear. There may be some. You'll also learn a great deal about a person delivering the bad news. View yourself as a work of art in progress. You won't be finished until you can improve. Seek the options from which help turn you into a masterpiece. Remember, the pride cuts both ways. It has value in building your self-respect, but also destructive when it causes you to... Be deaf and blind to feedback that might help you. Don't allow your pride to destroy you. Object when criticism is directed at you. Rather than what you do, tell scolders that you'll respond much better to a rejection of your behavior than attack on your person. Share your perspective of a situation after the criticism has been delivered. Acknowledge the extent of your agreement with the comments and point out your disagreement. Supply facts to correct inaccuracies. Assertion your opinions firmly yet without annoyance. Suggest a plan for corrective action that satisfies both of you. Learn whatever lessons this confrontation has taught you. Speak when you are angry and you'll make the best speech you'll ever regret. Lawrence Peter Control your anger. Anger is a valid emotion, both to experience and to express, but you and the people around you are not served well by a steady diet of it. You can learn to control your anger. Yes, you can get professional help if repeated age is harmful, harming your life. Yes, you can. Look at yourself in the mirror and say, no other person makes you angry. You make you angry. Enter potentially anger-provoking situations refusing to be riled. Let your armor be the knowledge that your wrath won't serve your interests any better than time you did in the last time. Stop reacting below the neck and start thinking above the neck. You are now destined to react with your gut, thereby lose emotional challenges. You can respond with your gray matter and win. Analyze the motives of those who push your emotional buttons and recognize that others feel justified in behavior that looks irrational, childish, and punishing to you. Recognize that people who are mean, rude, and nasty to you are doing so not so much because they want to hurt you, but because they are hurting. It takes considerable pain of fear to cause one person to lash out at another. Do you normally get angry with people who are hurt or fearful? Make your honest assessment of the typical results of your outburst. Do you see and feel do you feel well served by them? If so, why are you reading this list? Resolve to stop shooting yourself in the foot. When you feel guilty, stop talking. Inhale and exhale deeply. Feeling anger. Leave your body with every spent air. Grab a pen and squeeze. Feeling the anger escape through your fingers. Call the short break and leave the room. When you're able to speak calmly, describe the anger you felt and move quickly to a solution that might be the needs of the two of you. I never expect to see a perfect work from an imperfect man. Alexander Hamilton Accept others' imperfections. Beauty and the Beast is a tale of accepting the ultimately loving imperfections in others. Like Beauty and the Fairy Tale, you can accept others as they are. Yes, you can recognize that expecting perfection from other human beings is an act of arrogance. Stay off this high horse. Recognize that expecting perfection means that other people must change for you. This gives others the message that they're not good enough, and this is the ultimate act of rejection. Stop rejecting people lest they start rejecting you. Acknowledge that people who expect perfections are praise misers. In their eyes, nothing is ever well enough to warrant recognition. Force yourself to acknowledge the efforts of others. Begin today and say thank you in a sincere way to every deserving person in your life. Reviews to Refuse to relive the disappointment you set up for each day for when people fail to achieve the unattainable goals you set for them. Establish more realistic goals with them for their performance. Look for special talents and skills in each person. Make a list and study it. Celebrate your good fortune to being living and working with such a gifted people. Think back over the unbridging and understand why and how your perfectionism was reformed. Discovering in roots, it will help you to temper it. On the left side of this sheet of paper, record all the benefits of being a perfectionist. On the right side, chronicle the pain and dysfunction of both you and yours, others associated with it. What does this analysis tell you about the value of continuing as you are? He who fights with monsters might take care lest he thereby become a monster. Frederick Wilhelm Nietzsche Deflect aggressive people. 
You are fortunate to get the last aisle seat in the plane for a cross-country flight. Just as you settle in, a tall, imposing passenger confronts you and says, Hey, my partner and I have separate seats here, but I'm certain matters to discuss. The aisle seat is very important to us. We wouldn't mind moving into the center seat, would you? Can you deflect aggressive people like this in an aisle assassin? Yes, you can. Avoid situations where they're likely to encounter physical hostile people. Shun dangerous neighborhoods, racial, bar racial bars, racist bars, exciting crowds. When physical danger looms, run and get help immediately. Prepare for aggressive people. When you experience a loss of hands of a pushy person, devise a plan for fending off similar aggression in the future. Repeat the person's request. Embellish to your advantage in the airplane, you might say. You want me to give up this aisle seat that I worked so hard to get? So you and your friend can conduct business. I don't think so. Make the request sound like outrageous as possible to the requester to anyone else in hearing range. Thank others for their verbal acts of aggression as you deflect them. That's right, thank them. The aisle assassin would have been totally closed off at the end of the response, just described as you had added. But thank you for asking. Be sure to state it and close them with, but thank you for asking. Just no. Just say no. This may be tough for you to do, but you know what? But it is the simplest and often most effective response. Just say no. No. When you say no, do so with a tone of finality and certainty to make sure that there's no even more foolproof. Have a smile on your face when you say it. Words wound, but as a veteran of 12 years in the United States Senate, I happily attest that they do not kill. London Baines Johnson. Defuse angry people. The pressure of people and attention of life seems to be shortening everyone's view. Since there appears to be no reversal in the trend, expect to meet increasing numbers of irate people. Can you defuse their anger? Yes, you can. Remain calm. Don't let people push your buttons. There's no reason why you should... Let them get you angry. Good idea. Count to ten. Take a breath. Set an outburst of reflection on them, not you. Tell yourself you'll succeed only by staying in your own head. Think about something pleasant. Monitoring the body language of antagonists. Remain alert to dilated pupils, flaring nostrils, rigid body posture, threatening movements, rapid breathing, and other warning signals. Move away, becoming consolatory to asking agitated people to talk about what they're feeling. Move away. Become and ask agitated people to talk about what they're feeling. Get the other person to sit down. We escalate the balls of our feet, not the cheeks of our seat. We escalate on the balls of our feet, not the cheeks of our seat. Listen. Allow the person to vent and don't interrupt. Show interest and concern in your face and eyes. After the venting is well underway, ask questions in a calm voice. Seek clarification, amplification, not justification. Emphasize by saying, I understand how you feel that way. Note that this is not the same as agreeing. It shows that you're listening and affirms the person's feelings are legitimate, which they always are. Once you listen to everything the person has to say, offer what they ask is for a remedy that meets both your needs. Then all else fails, the person continues to argue, ask what you want me to do. What will make you happy? Then either comply or say what you cannot do and if you can or cannot do so. If there were no bad people, there could be no good lawyers. Charles Dickens Handle difficult people. A pundit once observed that there are two kinds of people, those who have ulcers and those who are carriers. If you have to live with the workers with carriers, you have learn to get the best out of them yes you can take a hard look at your behavior are you a match with that ignite short fuses are your close friends to help you answer these questions if you don't have any close friends you have already have the answer let people let problem people express themselves without interruption listen to them and try to understand their feelings reflect carefully on their words before you respond ask for a change that you want get to the point but do so in the way that condemns the deed and not to the doer recognize the performance not people in the problem attack and change behavior not attitudes show people what you want by example let the people see doing the very things that you're asking them expect the best treat people as if you're already the way you want them to be let the self-fulfilling prophecy the Pygmalion effect to go work for you self-fulfilling prophecies allow difficult people to maintain their dignity dignity and self-respect don't command demand or condemn them never cause them to lose face at your hands seek to understand people's motives so that you can figure out what might take to help them get to the change show people how it is in their best interest to adopt the behaviors you request show them how they'll avoid pain and derive pleasure by going along with you 
When progress is made, say thank you. Happiness is not so much as giving or sharing. We make his living by what we get, but what we make life from what we give. Norman McEwen. Give appreciated gifts. The crowd in the shopping mall on December 26 are a good indication that not all gifts are prized by those who receive them. You can consistently please people with your presence. Yes, you can. Give unexpected gifts as a birth or baby. Take a gift or a mother, father, sibling. Remembering events aren't typical. Commemorative except by you. Send just thinking of you cards. Carefully listen and observe those whom you give gifts and discover those who truly enjoy receiving. Make gifts handcrafted, presented, personal statement, especially if you don't typically create gifts you give. Give gifts wrapped in unusual packages, delivered in novel ways. An example would be a dozen roses given one day at a time. Send thoughtfully written notes, either as a gift or alongside as your gifts. Write warm remembrances in books and grave keepsakes. When you can't afford the real thing, give a miniature. For example, a toy model of a Porsche with a personal note. Pair a book with a related present. For example, a cookbook and a gourmet ingredient. Pair a book with a related present. Pick greeting cards carefully. Pass on those that open with a negative statement. For example, I may not tell you often enough how much I love you. Write the person's name at the top of the message. Underline the phrases there are appropriate in the relationship. Add a sentiment of your own. Consider revealing planned surprises. The joy of anticipation may overwhelm the pleasantness of a surprise. Record a video or an audio tape for a loved one. No one's head aches when he is comforting another. Indian proverb. Make others feel special. You get the best results from people when you feel good about themselves and good about you. Once you've understand and accept and apply this basic truth about human behavior, you can start immediately to build more meaningful relationships. Yes, you can. Listen to one of the highest compliments you can. Listening. Listen is one of the highest compliments you can pay people is to show interest in their ideas and their beliefs. Apologize when someone feels hurt by something you've done. Admit to your errors and accept responsibility for your role in the screw up. Trust people by giving them more responsibility, self-determination, and freedom to act. Show greater concern for people in their lives. Remember things about them, birthdays, adversaries, and personal interests. Respond with empathy to their fears, concerns, and traumas. Thank people who help you praise them, and they do good jobs. Be generous with your compliments. Ask for things in a respectful way. May I, please, need to find permanent homes in your speech. Call people by name. The one acknowledgement unique to them. Use people's names wherever you meet them and say goodbye to them. And then when you use the name, make certain that it's the right name. The only person wants to use you to use. The one the person wants you to use. Pronounce accurately and spelled correctly. Keep people on your mind. Wonder how they keep feeling about what's happening in their lives right now. The more you think about them, the more likely you are emphasizing with them and act in the ways that are considerate of them. Ask people for their ideas and use those ideas. Reprove thy friendly privately, commend him publicly. Allow others to save face. One way the Japanese and the Western world view relationships differently evolves the concept of saving face. The Japanese culture places high value on protecting dignity and self-respect, on avoiding any possibility of embarrassing others. You can do a better job of allowing others to save face. Yes, you can. Criticize only in private. And after doing so, give others pos positive strokes by saying something good about their performance, confirming your support of their efforts, expressing optimism for the future, and voicing your appreciation for their cooperation. Criticize performance not performers saying I far more than you never point your finger at another person or make any form of demeaning gestures accept sincere apologies quickly not allowing others to grovel offer apologies quickly admit to your errors easily thank people when they retreat from a strongly held position acknowledging how difficult it is to give in and how much you appreciate such a demonstration of goodwill accept compliments and gifts carefully and enthusiastically don't refuse or depreciate either one thereby hurting the person who wants you to have it accept compliments gratefully and enthusiastically talk with people not to them guard against condescending tones stop demanding commanding and condemning live by the golden rule look for ways to serve people anger ventilated often hurries towards forgiveness anger concealed often hardens into revenge edward robert bulwer lytton
Express anger productively. Most of the time you will want to control your anger, but occasionally the best of all concern to vent it. Sometimes the importance for your feelings won't be recognized in a more dispassionate discussion. You need not fear becoming angry. You can learn how to handle it well. Yes, you can. Save your anger for a worthy cause. On the sheet of paper, write down 10 behaviors by others that anger you. Resolve and scratch five from the list in one of the two ways and recognize that your anger about this behavior accomplishes good. And two, take some positive action to change the behavior that upsets you. Anticipate situations in which you're likely to explode. Plan an expression of anger that communicates your indignation, your indignation clearly without making, a look, making you look out of control or irrational. Never seek to punish with your anger and never allow it to turn into fury, frenzy, or hysteria. Use your anger instead to demonstrate frustration, irritation, or outrage. Stay at least five feet away from those whom you are expressed anger. Both of you would either be standing or sitting, sitting in a preferred position. Make absolute no physical threats. Do not engage in a name calling. Do not say anything you will regret later. For example, get out of this house. Do not use profanity. Do not threaten to do something that you will not have the desire to do once you calm down. Start your compliment with the word I. Utter at least five sentences before using the word you. Discuss the feelings thoroughly. Accept responsibility for the young, the anger before you. Describe the behavior that you have allowed to provoke you. Take away love and our earth is a tomb. Cope with a breakup. As the song goes, break, breaking up is hard to do. One of the most difficult periods of anyone's life following the ending of a romantic relationship. But as hard as it may be, you could find ways to speed your recovery and get on with your life. Yes, you can. Denial helps you survive the initial shock, for example. She'll return to me. She comes to her senses. But don't remain to denial once the reality is clear. Don't allow anger to consume you. Your indignation will prevent you from acting intelligently in the way that benefits your long-term best interests. If you feel guilty about something you did and may participate or precipitated the split, Remember that both parties are equally responsible for the health of the relationship. If you did something really bad, vow never to do it again in the future. Before you reach out and attempt to pass things between you and the two, be certain that both of you share a genuine commitment to making things different, better this time. Expect the experience of depression, which is either a sign that you're starting to accept reality or a possible indication that you need professional help. Protect yourself by remaining isolated for a while from potential new relationships. One day you'll be ready to commit the old relationship to, rem to memory and prepare the following of new energy in yourself. It may help to mark the end of relationship with a private burial. Collect items and symbolize the relationship for an example, letters, photos, gifts, and bury them in your backyard. And as you speak, whatever words will affirm that they are releasing this person from your life. Allow your feelings of anger, sorrow, and relief to flow. Chapter 5. Motivate Others. It's not that the martinets that make an army work. It's the morale that the leaders put into the men that makes an army work. Harry S. Truman. If anything goes bad, I did it. If anything goes semi-good, then we did it. If anything goes real good, then you did it. That's all it takes to get people to win football games. Paul Bear Bryant. Gain respect as a leader. This is the one thing to be given as a mantle of leadership. It's another to have those who um, supervise feel you deserve it. Follow the examples of great leaders of our time and you can increase in respect. You receive as a leader. Yes, you can. Leaders have visions. They dream. Find out where you want to go. Write it down and get excited about it. Put something in your plan and excite the people around you. And then share the visions with them. Did Martin Luther King Jr. do any less? Leaders, listen. Learn the desires, aspirations, worries, and frustrations of your people. Find out what ideas they have for achieving your vision. Did Mahatma Gandhi do any less? Leaders, earn trust. Be honest with people. Have your word be more valuable things you own. Did General Norman Swazenkopf do any less? Leaders, uplift others. Praise and reward those who perform well for you. Give you a piece of that pie. Did Sam Walton do any less? Leaders, maintain humility. Give more credit to the people than they expect. Accept more blame than you deserve. Don't get seduced by your own press clippings. Did Paul Bear Bryant do any less? Leaders have fun. Supervision is independence. Drop your guard. Laugh at yourself. Create an atmosphere where smiles generate all the light needed to do the work. Did John F. Kennedy do any less? 
leaders serve to be more concerned about the welfare of people than you are about yourself ask what did I do for my people today how did I support their efforts how did I motivate them how did I give them what they need in order to give me what I want did Moses do any less to have vision to listen to earn trust to uplift others to maintain humility have fun and to serve if you can dream it you can do it Walt Disney Create an inspiring vision. As a leader, you are in charge of a you in charge of a big picture. Your people depend on you to articulate the values, belief, and missions that will drive this organization. You can meet their expectations and create a vision that will inspire them. Yes, you can. Reserve time to dream. Disconnect from the firefighting pressure of work. Take exotic vacations. Enjoy escape weekends. Plan a few mental health days each year. Use time away from regular routines to fantasize about tomorrow. Set new goals. Dream up new products and services. Ask what if, why not questions. Search for new connections between old ideas. Your vision probably needs to be considered with the larger vision perhaps that of a boss your division of your company study your creeds values beliefs for guidance and inspiration for forming yours put your vision down on paper first address your leadership role what changes do you foresee in the role what plans do you have for bridging changes about form the larger vision of your company your plant you plant and department for your store your team depending on the level of responsibility include value statements about the people for example rewards recognition development diversity your organization, for example, structure, decision-making, authority, teamwork. Your business, for example, satisfying customers, ethical standards, entrepreneurial spirit, long-term thinking. Your environment, for example, health, safety, environmental responsibility, role in community. Share your vision with those who will join with you in attaining it. Better yet, let them help you create it. The country is full of good coaches. What it takes to win is a bunch of interested players. Hire top performers. Here's the best way to deal with problem performers. Don't hire them in the first place. Both poor and superb workers probably already are on their way to which you chose them. So why not make the right choice in the first place? You could do it. Yes, you can. Hire top performers. You can get what you pay for. Don't expect to attract headliners with understudy wages. Know what you're looking for. First, make a list of 20 most important qualities you need in the next person to fill the job. One of the behaviors that should be one of on every list, every job, and that person must be a team player. Organizations where people don't pull together fall apart. When you conduct interviews, use your list of desired qualities to frame each interview question. The best predictor of the future performance is the past. The best predictor of future performance is past performance. Learn what the candidate has already accomplished recently. Pay less attention to experience and education. Find out what the person can do can do the job. Provide interviews with a written list of job performance expectations for the position. Discuss the assess the readiness for each candidate to fulfill those expectations. The selection decision is to be made by a committee. Delay, rating, ranking, and voting on candidates until their strengths, weaknesses, or any unanswered questions regarding each one are thoroughly examined. William Ringley once said, when two men in business always agree, one of them is not needed. If you're hiring an assistant, seek someone who thinks differently than you. Favor, favor candidates who are strong where you're weak and weak where you are strong. Before you build a better mousetrap, it helps to know if there are any mice out there. Mortimer B. Zuckerman, learn the needs of your followers. How do you motivate employees put into jobs from where you meet the needs and importance from which they work and how is it important to you? Before you can help meet them, those and their needs, you have to learn the needs and what those needs are. Can you find out what drives your workers? Yes, you can. Manage by wandering around, spending time asking questions, employees of the desires of the words revealed. From a tone of a voice and to discuss their work, observe them doing their jobs, what desires did their actions reveal, what turns them on and off. Try them to try out different tasks. Where do they shine? Where do they languish? Ask them what they like, what they don't like about their work, and they do now. And ask them to describe their ideal job. Convene an employee-focused group of brainstorming ways from which work can become more motivated. Don't assume that 
you could stereotype employees or that all have pretty much the same needs. Acknowledge their individuality and their uniquenesses. Don't assume that what is important to you is also important to them. They may be more different from you than you think. Don't assume that they are interested only in material benefits of, of work. Do assume that recognition, challenge, achievement, autonomy, personal growth, creativity, and meaningful work are just as important to them as it is to you. Administer a survey of employee attitudes about work. Conduct exit, conduct exit interviews. When employees leave voluntarily, find out what you might have done to keep them. Use what you learn to motivate existing staff. He who knows yet thinks that he does not know has great wisdom. He who does not know and thinks he knows is diseased. Lao Tzu. Find out how followers see you. The modern management mandate is to lead by example. One of the surest ways to get loyalty, hard work, punctuality, creativity, initiative, thoroughness, dependability, and service you want from others is to have them see these very same qualities in you. Do they? You can find out what kind of role model you are for your employees. Yes, you can. Watch for the nonverbal cues employers send your way. Do they speak in respectful tones? Do they seek your counsel? Are they relaxed in your presence? Observe employee behavior. Do your workers' willingness even happily comply with your request? Ask employees to complete the opinion survey about the work environment and your relationship style and your leadership style. Ask trusted colleagues what they hear from your employees about your leadership style. Probe the specifics. Ask their suggestions on the employees you want to see more of in your behavior. Ask employees to fashion a list of 20 numbered leadership behaviors they need from you. Give each employee a bag of three lemons and three oranges. Ask the numbers of the fruit corresponding to behavior of lists that reflect the best opportunities for improvement. Lemon, lemons and you're the greatest leadership strengths and greatest leadership strengths for oranges. Videotape yourself running a meeting and conducting businesses in your office on a given day. Ask your company to get 360 degree feedback on you. This involves administering leadership surveys to your superiors, peers, subordinates, the result of analyzing returning to you by consultant from who explains the implications of the data that helps you develop and st the strategies to respond to it. The buck stops here. Harry S. Truman. Hold others accountable. Many employees can be counted on their own to give their best without closed supervision. Others need to be held answerable for their performance. You can hold all employees accountable. Yes, you can. But performance expectations in writing uses the method explaining on page 153. This list points to the base of establishing accountability by serving notices of precise requirements, getting a powerful commitment to the performance requirements of a list of employees and their development. Conduct periodic formal performance reviews the more often you conduct with them. The more you base the reviews on written performance expectations, greater employees accountability will be. Invoke penalties in the form of criticism, discipline, and employee fails to take expectations seriously and dispense rewards when they Embrace expectations and accomplish them. Once an employee behaves begins become a problem, create a paper trail. Get a private log of your concerns and record your efforts to correct the situation. After two or three or more two or three oral reprimands, make each succeeding warning in writing, giving a copy of the employee and putting another copy in his or her personal file. Check this procedure with your human resource office before implementing it. Once you predict the possibility of having a formal discipline on fire or non-performing employee, consult with their boss to make sure that he or she will stand behind your decision. Show new employees by the way you treat others that you will hold them strictly accountable for their performance. Demonstrate through your leadership behavior a low tolerance of mediocrity. The deepest principle of human nature is the desire to be appreciated. William James. Yes, appreciated. Give praise. Many employees report working in the praise misers. For praise misers, managers who have mastered the art of saying thank you, your employees need to feel appreciated. You can learn how to motivate them through praise. Yes, you can. The first step is becoming freer of the praise and recognize which is the following traits may be sealed in your lips. Having said in personal, unbridging, expect, expecting the best, holding employees to unrealistic standards, not taking time, favoring the stick over the carrot, mistaking praise for the reward rather than seeing it as a motivator. Plan in advance to take advantages of the opportunities to praise employees for what will likely to be outstanding outcomes of an exceptional effort. Anticipate the victories they're likely to have. Prepare to celebrate with them. Praise the deed rather than the doer. Point out specifically what the people have done to earn your appreciation. Let them be pumped up by their work, not by you. 
Don't leave out any deserving employees when you praise. Acknowledge the contributions of blockers. He who clear a way for the leading ground gainers. Praise sincerely. Have a smile in your heart and in your voice. And don't applaud employees only when you're in a good mood. Don't pass the compliments like free samples. And don't make your praise sickly sweet and overly effusive. Praise publicly only when the... Re the recipient won't be embarrassed and when others aren't likely to react with resentment never negate praise example don't follow an acknowledgement of success with i wish you would do it that way all the time don't negate praise no amount of pay ever made a good soldier a good teacher a good artist or a good workman no amount of pay john ruskin motivate inexpensively does money motivate people to work harder? Answer this question for yourself by picturing your mind of the hardest working people you know, judging whether they perform as they do because of the money or they because of the money they make. Whether your conclusion, the more important question be, can you motivate without spending a lot of money? Yes, you can. Write personal notes, appreciation to every member of your team, and a completion of the important project. Public and accomplishments of the year. Booklet describing victories of picturing the victors. Give plum assignments to the hard workers. Take time to counsel employees of their professional development and on their career direction, directions. Hand out tickets to sporting and cultural events. Buy copies of the largest business bestsellers for your team. Have lunch. And take a break with the group of employees you don't often get to see. Take opportunities to give your employees credit, both orally and in writing. Get stories from the published in the panning newsletter in a professional publication. Appear in initial meetings on focusing groups groups, quality circles, and task force to express your appreciations. Manage by wandering around. Show an interest in the employees that they're doing and thank them on the spot. Send employees to skill building seminars. Send employees representing you at an important meeting. Best idea. Ask employees how you can best show your appreciation and give them what they want. Do not use a hatchet to remove a fly from your friend's forehead. Chinese proverb. Criticize constructively. In constructive criticism, a contradiction in terms no criticism can elevate rather than annihilate, build up rather than tear down, or enhance rather than diminish, can give criticism that minimizes the defensiveness in others and encourages them to improve their performance. Yes, you can. Criticize in private. Criticize in private. Criticize in private. You may want to find out first whether the person wants feedback. Ask, would you like a second opinion? Or do you want to know how I feel about that? Before you open your mouth, examine your heart. Don't believe you can help the goal of constructive criticism while you feel angry, insulted, or wronged. Condemn the deal, not the doer. Separate the sin from the sinner. Say what you see. Focus on what you happened rather than what the person did. Avoid the word you. Say what's wrong with the behavior point or specific negative impact on the organization term, the person, or the view. Ask the person to explain what happened. There may be a good reason for his or her behavior and find out. Paint a clear picture of what you expect in the future. Suggest what corrective action is needed to get there. Better idea? Let the other person suggest the remedy. Ask, what will it take to keep this from happening again? Insist that the person makes a commitment to a plan for improvement. Pledge your support. Thank the person for cooperating, express your optimism about the future, or praise a positive aspect of his or her performance. Don't stick around long enough to change the subject to something that will weaken the impact of the criticism. 80% of American managers cannot answer with any measure of confidence. These seemingly simple questions, what is my job, what in it really counts, and how well am I doing? W. Edwards Deming Evaluate performance effectively. The annual performance review can be one of the most frustrating duties managers fulfill as one of the most anxiety-laden events of employees face. But it doesn't have to be that way. You can use reviews to improve employee performances and employees can look forward to them as opportunities to receive valuable coaching. Yes, you can. Show the performance review form a job candidates during the employee's interview and during orientation so that they know that they will be expecting what will be expected of them. Provide feedback throughout the year so that you can tent the review, not to come on as a surprise. Don't save up criticism for praise or formal sessions. Increase the frequency of employee reviews to two or three or even four times a year. After you roll in a review from the judge to coach, get training on how this is to do. Have the employees perform self-assessments and talk much as you do. Listen and ask questions. Read your form of rating numbers and labels. For example, commendable, employees fixable, 
Employees fixate on them and lose sight of the making of a commitment of improving performance. Replace performance objectives, for example, dependable, with statements about the specific expectations of the employee you are reviewing. For example, respond to requests for credit verification within 24 hours. Make sure that at least half of your form is devoted to planning a course of action to improve performance. Give employees the opportunity to provoke, to provide feedback on how well you are supervising them. Hold a follow-up meeting one month later to discuss performance and progress. Lord, make me an instrument of thy peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow and sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. St. Francis and Assisi. Resolve conflict among others. When people around you react to stress and competition by going into each other's throats, you need the wisdom of Solomon. The job of reference isn't easy, but you can do it. Yes, you can establish unequivocal office policies so to minify, minimize conflict. Be firm in your requirements regarding job performance, em employee rights, ethics, treatment, and customer cooperation. Dress, weapons, drugs, alcohol, and other concerns that your personnel officers or lawyer agrees are legitimate. Whenever you speak separately to conflicting parties, reserve the right to bring anything discussed to the attention of the other person if you decide that's best. When you invite conflicting parties to your office, set the ground rules for conversation will be controlled, civil, and free of accusations. Don't take sides. The antagonists need to have confidence in you and trust that you will remain impartial. Your role should be that of a facilitator, not a judge. Get the facts out. Let one person speak without interruption. Have the second one paraphrase to the first person's satisfaction what the first person had said. Next, hear the second person's side of the story in the same way. Continue until the parties either discover their communication breakdown or agree on what the conflict is about. Ask for a resolution that all three of you can live with. If you like what you hear, go for it. If not, impose or negotiate a settlement of your own. Provide the opportunity of one party to save face should be here perceived as the loser. Let the, per let the party save face should be he or she perceived as the loser. Show that person how important he or she is for cooperating with you. Monitor the success of the resolution and react as necessarily. Few will have the greatness to bend history itself. But each of you can work to change a small portion of events and the total of all those acts will be written will be written the history of this generation. Robert F. Kennedy. Make change happen. The future shock once predicted by author Alvin Toffler is here. Those who prosper in our constant world accept change as positive forces and can persuade others to do the same. Those fearful of change are unable to rally others in new directions will be steamrolled with the violity of modern organizations. You can get others to go along with useful change with the minimum of resistance. Yes, you can. Prepare for resistance. People fear change because they expect to lose something they value and because they have no often seen been victims of poorly administered change and anticipate the exact concerns and objections you're likely to hear. Don't believe that resistors are being foolish or obstinate. Put yourself in their shoes to understand their fears. Then you'll be in much better position to reassure them. Whenever possible involves employees in deciding on and planning for the change, explain the change fully. Give a rational for it, a rationale for it, the roles employees will play in it, and the implications emphasize benefits to employees and to the company. Provide venting forums. Listen without comment. Acknowledge concerns. Don't criticize or belittle them. Tell employees how you'll address their objections. Demonstrate management's commitment to the change. Do more than you share of work and accept more than you share of sacrifices needed to implement the change. Make those organizational adjustments and resource relocations needed to accommodate the change. Train, coach, counsel, and reward employees throughout the implementation phase. Be there for them. The greatest good we can do for others is not to share our riches, but to reveal theirs. Author unknown. Increase the self-esteem of others. Increase the self-esteem of others. Some of your honest, best performers may be limited by their effectiveness, not by realizing just how good they are, but you can pump up 
those who hold themselves back because of negative self-concepts. Yes, you can. Help them set ambitious, specific goals in their professional de development. See that they are starting implementation on those goals. It's difficult for people to maintain a low opinion of themselves while making progress on professional development goals. Don't allow them to ignore or dismiss their success. Reveal their victories to them by documenting success on performance appraisals and in written commendations. Thank them personally whenever they achieve something important. Whenever your superior peer or customer compliments your subordinates to you, tell your employees what was said. Encourage higher-ups and take notice of your employees to wander around on occasion to acknowledge them. Show people how their work helps others and they'll feel better about it and better about themselves. Reassign them to jobs that are obviously beneficial to others. Rearrange your subordinates to work with other positive, self-confident people whose attitudes may rub off on them. Ask for employees' help and suggestions to use many of their ideas as you can. Few things help an individual more than to place responsibility on him and to let him know that you trust him. Few things help an individual more than a, to place responsibility on him and to let him know that you trust him. Booker T. Washington Delegate to empower others. Do you have more than you can handle? Do you hesitate to take vacations, fearing what will happen when you're gone? Do you have employees whose talents are not being fully tapped? Can you relieve the burden of empowering your employees by giving them increased responsibility? Yes, you can. Understand why you don't delegate. If you manage to close those vests and afraid you lose control, recognize the delegation increases your control by enabling you to do and to manage more. And you can lack and trust in your employees. Note how the steps below increase the odds of your employee success and give you total re recourse in the case of failure. Inventory employee talents. What do you... What do you do? What they do well? What do you like that they do? Where do they shine for you? Match the talent inventory to the responsibilities. Who has the ability to interest and time to step in? Plan for delegation of tasks. Who needs to know before you reassign work? Your boss, your peers, customers, other employees? What accommodations need to be made? What possible negative fallouts or risks needs to be minimized? How? Talk within chosen employees. State the expectations clearly. Again, the benefits of the assignment express your optimism that he or she will be successful support the delegation of tasks provide training coaching information and the resources an employee will need praise both efforts and accomplishments give the employee authority needed to make decisions necessary to perform the tasks evaluate the results hold monthly reviews as you decide to re to rescind in the assignment revise it or make it permanent part of the employees job duties had God sent the Israelites a committee instead of Moses, they would still be in Egypt. Author unknown. Lead productive meetings. Meetings can gobble up major times at work, and they are also one of the most valuable communications tools at your disposal. When used correctly, meetings generate synergy and focus the energies of many of the unified goal. You can lead to productive meetings. We never meet without a written agenda specifically to the dates of the meeting, starting the ending times, location, goals, accomplished, points to discuss, and what should you attend, and preliminary work expected of the participants. Use the first meeting to discuss what's expected from the members and what's expected from you. Agree on a mutual performance contrast. Stick to the agenda. Keep social chit-chat and discretions to a minimum. Listen to the people who have to say and they influence participants to do the same. Listen to what people have to say. When someone is expressing an important idea, don't let it go without a response. Carry a big stick. Stick. Step in to resolve disagreements. Don't allow personal agendas to interfere. Study the nonverbal cues of group members of the Science for Confusion, Boredom, and Alienation. Don't allow decisions to be made without challenging the validity of underlining assumptions or before examining the question, what might go wrong with our plan? Keep the process healthy. That is, and follow seven points above without over-influencing the content. That is the outcomes of which need to console outcomes. Make decisions on your own rather than a convin convene meeting. When the meeting ends, summarize the accomplishments and reaffirm the commitment to follow up. We must indeed all hang together, or most assuredly we shall all hang separately. Benjamin Franklin Mold individuals into a team. You get better results from employees who feel their efforts unite in a single direction by a sense of common interest. You can provide this unification. Yes, you can. Hire those jobs candidates who demonstrate the desire to team players rather than those lone rangers. State of your expectations in specific written terms from how your employees will team players. Example, make suggestions of improving the way that we serve our customers. 
to find the team clearly in writing so everyone knows exactly what their team's on. Conduct regular team meetings during from which the team concept concept is discussed and reinforced. Recognize the rewards employees as a team when they accomplish something as a team. Show as much appreciation to your second stringers as you do to all your stars. Recognize the rewards individuals for being team players as much as individual ex excellence. Criticize behavior that weakens team unity. Put an item or two addressing team player skills on a performance review form. Step in to resolve conflicts and threatening solidarity. Solid solidarity. Make clear how important harmony is to you. Never compare employees to each other. Hold one up to a model for the others to emulate. Ensure the team members get to know each other and that they nature each other's responsibilities and duties very well. Model through the actions the very same teamwork you expect of them. Ignite employee passions with a vision that inspires, unites, and focuses. A community is like a ship. Everyone ought to be prepared to take the helm. Henrik Ibsen. Manage a self-directed team. The idea behind the self-directed team is to liberate a group of workers to do what's required of them. One team member shows the organization expects they are free within certain boundaries to determine the best way to attain those outcomes can be help self-directed team to go and prosper. Yes, you can. Form the first self-managed team in the company. Select the members who you'd like to strive under the new system, thereby establishing an initial success. Train the team with their supervisors of the self-managed team how to and their behaviors to require them. Continue the training even after the team has begun to operate. Provide teams in their own supervision with the clear purpose to tell them exactly what the rationale is, asking for them functions to function this way. Emphasize the benefits to them. Show them that they'll be contributing more positively to the organization. Give the teams clear expectations of what they're to accomplish and the degree of quality they are to attain. Establish mutually agreed upon measures of success so they can gauge their outcomes. See the supervision. Supervisor gives the team frequent feedback of their performance. Make sure they know what they're doing, particularly in the early days of team effort. Provide every assistant worker needed to redirect the efforts in more productive direction. See the team members get an avalanche of positive reinforcement from each other, from supervisors, from upper management, from customers. Support the supervisors of the teams with coaching and encouragement. Stand behind them. Training is everything. The peach was once bitter. The peach was once a bitter almond. Cauliflower is nothing but a cabbage with a college education. Mark Twain. Training is everything. The peach was once a bitter almond. Cauliflower is nothing but a cabbage with a college education. Sponsor useful training. Many companies spend a great deal of money and train employees. When the investment is not always returned in terms of visible benefits to the bottom line, you get sponsored training in your company that produces valuable results. Yes, you can. Use performance review results to survey superior peers, subordinates to decide which training to provide. Have employees meet supervisors prior to training to agree upon exactly what they should be looking for to get out of the experience. Organize shorter sessions spread out over time rather than longer, more concentrated sessions. Five consecutive days training is not likely to retain as well as applied for a fully half-day session held once a week for 10 weeks. Ensure the training programs have clearly stated learned objectives consist practical examples and applications. Provide opportunities for participants to influence and to thrust the content, including activities that involve them in learning and give plenty of opening openings to ask questions. Hire the best trainers available. Don't look to save money in them. Usually get what you pay for. Ask participants to evaluate the training they received to suggest should they be eliminated, added, improved before it's offered again. Ensure the trainer responds for the feedback. Prior to the end of the training session, have participants construct action plans to how they apply and what they've learned to do their job. Insist the participants discuss their action plans with their bosses immediately following the seminar. Chapter 6, Prosper at Work. By working faithfully 8 hours a day, you may eventually get to be a boss and work 12 hours a day. It's not enough to be industrious, so are the ants. What are you industrious about? Henry D. Thoreau. Find out what your boss expects. To work for a puzzle. One of those bosses who believe he or she hired a psychic. You are expected to read the boss's mind, knowing what is to be done and how to do it, unless you ask these secrets won't be revealed until it's too late. You can unravel the mystery. Yes, you can. Ask for up-to-date job descriptions. You may have a current job description that covers only the scope of your responsibilities. The what. Explain to the boss to do your job better or should 
of know the why and how and to what degree of quality ask these expectations be written down for each of your duties if your boss won't and can't provide with the written expectations write them down yourself then submit them for a revision of approval discuss them to ensure both of that you understand each of them and mean for them to do the same thing never leave puzzles presence without a contract when given an assignment, tell your boss exactly how to plan the approach it and what you plan to do and expect to get the results to take. The results to take to get approved on your plans now so that you won't later hear that that's not what I wanted, that that's not the way I wanted it done. Ask other employees about their understanding of the boss's expectations. If only them have more effective than the deciphering of the boss's needs, learn from the person's success. Conduct an intense study of your boss over the next 30 days. Spend a great deal of time for his or her presence. Pay attention. Observe his or her behavior more closely than any time before. Listen more intently than ever you have. At the end of the 30 days, synthesize what you have learned about your, what's important to your boss. A man should live with his superiors as he does with fire, not too near, lest he burn, nor too far, lest he freeze. Diogenes. Please your boss. Your boss to serve the pleasure of your boss. The more pleasurable you make your service, the quicker you'll get to the top. You can find your way to delight your supervisor. Yes, you can. Each day do something to make your boss look good, especially in his or her own boss. His or her to his or her own boss. Learn the greatest pains or frustrations your boss experiences. Eliminate at least one of them. See the, see, see the problems get resolved before they reach your boss's desk. If you present a problem to the boss, go in armed with possible solutions. Keep the boss informed. Never let either good nor bad news come from anyone but you. Praise your boss to others and likely to spill the beans of you. Learn the boss's expectations for your performance. Don't start any new assignment without being absolutely sure of what and how the boss and what he's looking for. Find out what skills he or she considers you to have at least adept to immerse yourself into a professional development program to for perfect them. Save money for your company. Discover ways to think cheaper. Make money for your company. Discover new markets and ways to get additional business in old markets. Be seen as an innovator. Find ways to do things better, faster, differently. Take such great care of your customers, both internal and external, that they praise you to the boss. I don't mean competition. I crush it. Charles Revson. Serve customers expectationally. Corporate dig Dynasties have been built on stellar customer service, Federal Express, Disney, Nordstrom's, Walmart, dramatic visible examples. Your company's name may not be the household word, but you can improve your bottom line today through greater responsiveness to the people from who pay your salary. Yes, you can. Remember, you're always either servicing the customer or servicing someone who is servicing the customer. Act like it. Treat your employee the way you want to be treated by the customer. If you were a customer, if you abuse your employees, don't surprise that you're they abuse your customers. Make the expectations for the treatment of the customers exceptionally clear to the frontline servicing provider. Anticipate, anticipate, anticipate. Don't merely respond to customers. Meet their needs before they ask and solve their problems before they complain. Give your customer far more than they expect. Listen attentively in complaining customers and solve their problems quickly, generously, helpfully, thankfully, remorsefully. Never allow your customers to hear no or that's not my job. Communicate with customers. Don't allow them to be punished into unclear policies, improving the direction you give them as well as any signs you want them to heed. Be scrumptiously honest about products and services. Be, scrumpt be scrupulously, scrupulously honest. Scrupulously honest. Gather your employees to brainstorm answers to this question. How can we better serve our customers better, faster, differently than the competition? Continually ask your customers what you're doing, listen to their answers, and act on them. It's what you learn after you know it's all that counts. It's what you learn after you know it all that counts. John Wooden. Find out how well you're doing. Ask most employees how they think about the feedback received from their boss as well as response. What feedback? If this was your dilemma, you can find out ways to get your boss to provide constructive criticism about your performance. Yes, you can. The next time your boss fails to react something that you do, ask the question, What's one thing I might have done differently to get a better outcome? This question is more likely to get helpful responses than asking more generally, How did you like the job I did? 
The question is, is what's the one thing I might have done differently to get a better outcome? Ask your boss what one thing a big boss would say about your performance. Answer it likely to be flimsily disguised piece of feedback from your boss. Get a hold of employee performance review, possibly one used in your company by managers to give feedback. Listen to complaints the boss might make overall performance that aren't directed towards anyone in particular. Ask what you do to improve that area yourself. Ask a close colleague of your boss what kind of your boss thinks of your performance. Don't run to your boss off by blowing up and retrieving when you do some when you do receive some criticism. If you're not fired with enthusiasm, you'll be fired with enthusiasm. Vince Lombardi. Increase your chances to advance. A promotion isn't something that just happens. It's results from careful planning along the way. You can figure out what it will take for you to get ahead. Yes, you can. Early in the career, ask your boss how to help you create a career map, lays out possible routes about through the hierarchy. The plan should include dues from which pay informs and time in a great professional development and performance standards upgrade the map yearly. Learn on to the mentor. Who may or may not be your boss? Write down your career goals and ask the mentor for advice on how to attain them. Don't push so hard and the salary gets too far out of line with someone for your position. Top management may find too costly to promote or to retain you. Study the routines of others ahead you've taken to top to emulate them. Remain alert on new openings. Don't depend on your boss who may be afraid to lose you. Ask the support of your bids for available positions that might help you advance. Without becoming a nuisance of running and the risk of being seen over ambitious, remind your boss periodically of the interest of any upward mobility. Be friendly and helpful to the people in the position from which I aspire. They may be asking to recommend a placement for themselves one day. Establish a reputation outside your company as an expert. This may get a specific job offer, and your boss may you now see the need to retain you by offering you a promotion. I am not for myself. Who will be? If I am only for myself... What am I? Hillel the Elder. Sell yourself effectively. Your success will advance your career only if others find out about them. You can keep the people in your company informed about the value of your contributions without blowing your own horn too loudly. Yes, you can. First, be certain about the good product to the market. Be very good about what you do. Keep your key decision makers informed of the ongoing basis developments within the area of expertise that are now in the interest to the firm. Submit articles for publication in the company's newsletter that highlights the responsibilities of your accomplishments offered to the right of monthly column. Ask your boss to take off a staff meeting attended to high-ranking company officials without being pushy. Introduce yourself to any higher ups you encounter. Ask your boss for opportunities to showcase your presentation skills to upper management. Sharpen those skills first. Great top-level managers, whenever or wherever you see them, use a simple, Hello, Mrs. Roberts. After a while, they begin asking and finding out who you are. Author or co-author from a boss reports that he'll have a high visibility. Make sure the name appears on the cover. Author of a co-author of your boss reports they'll have a high visibility. Volunteers for your assignment that will bring you in a contract of a wide variety of new people both inside and outside the company. Be sure your boss sees any written commendations you receive from customers. Be kind and helpful to as many co-workers as you can and let word of mouth do the rest. Value has been defined as the ability to command the price. Luis D. Brandes. Value has been defined as the ability to command the price. As for the raise of promotion, you believe you deserve a raise and your worsening financial position has given you the courage to go for it? Can you ask for a raise in the way that will increase your chances of getting it? Yes, you can. Ask for it. You won't get any raise by wishing or hinting. Know exactly what you want and then when. If your boss responds to you in a request by asking for you think you're, you're worth, state the amount confidently. Justify your request in terms of the value of the contributions to the bottom line. Be specific. Let the boss see how you're giving you a raise is a good idea. Time to request to coincide with some good news the boss has received or with your having recently put in the particular exemplary performance. Never base an appeal on financial need, performance, and selling factors. However, you are wise to point out to any past wage freezes that may have led to your being paid less than your value to the firm warrants. If you heard that your performance has been earned as a raise, ask what you can do that or what you haven't been doing. Get specific suggestions that you can incorporate into the future behavior so you succeed in the next time. Ask the boss to agree to review the performance in another six months and to reconsider the raise. Anticipate the most likely objections to your request. Be prepared to dismantle them. If the answer is no, negotiate creative creatively.
What can be your boss offer to besides money now? Money at a specific date in the future, reduced working hours, days off, increased benefits, more training, job reassignment, large discounts on company products? Ask. The secret of success is making your vocation your vacation. Mark Twain. Make your work fun. Successful people don't hate what they do. What is not come what does not come penance must pay in order to earn a living you can have fun as you pursue your profession yes you can talk to people who benefit from your work the more valuable you realize your service is the happier you feel about providing it discuss with your boss and how you can add to your job taking a certain new responsibilities innovate invent new products and services find better faster different ways of doing things dream up a way to save money and make money for your organization search for creative solutions to old problems take few exciting risks Bring the same curiosity and vitality to your own work that will bring the hobbies of personal interest. Open your eyes and ears to comic events of occur, that occur during in your work. Laugh at yourself. Laugh at a disaster. Don't laugh at others. Post a witty, profound, insightful saying of the month in your office or in a public place for all to see. Apply the latest toys to your work. Upgrade your computer. Invest in some electronic widgetry that makes your job easier. Increase your productivity and gives you a kick. Enroll a seminar that has the goal of making you feel more empowered and more upbeat about your work. Keep a work journal or diary. Record your success and failures. Whenever you're feeling down, read your entries from a year ago to gain perspective on your current problems and realize how quickly you were able to make a light of them. The French fry is my canvas. Founder of McDonald's. Find fulfillment at work. Work has the potential to add life or subtract from it. Work has a potential to add to your life or subtract from it. It can be heavenly or hellish, somewhere in between. No matter what circumstances of your work, you can make work life more fulfilling. Yes, you can. Broaden your vision beyond your job that you perform. Find out which much of your company as you can. Learn what you can fit in a grand scheme of things. Look for ways you can fit in more satisfying one. Volunteer new, more challenging assignments as soon as they become available. Ask before your boss thinks of something, someone else. Ask your boss what would be the two that you can do to raise the level of responsibility and creativity in the present assignment if you want to have more enriched jobs ask for it make specific suggestions expand your capabilities learn new skills enjoy feelings that you can do the job as well as anyone has ever done it take advantage of opportunities help coworkers succeed take newcomers net less experienced employees under your wing teach them everything you know your excitement will grow as they do dream up ideas for doing your job better faster differently the resulting variety cost savings will pump you up as will the appreciation you receive from your superiors and customers if none of the ideas above do the trick for you then you're determining to feel better about your vocation start hunting for a new situation that meets your needs to grow while you work manners are like a zero in the arithmetic they may not be much in themselves but they are capable of adding a great deal of value to everything else Freya Stark Practice business etiquette. The golden rule is important in business as everywhere. Treat people with respect and consideration, and they'll return the favor. Furthermore, there is a certain rule of conduct in business that others have every reason to expect you to follow. You can meet these expe expectations. Yes, you can return phone calls within 24 hours when the person asks, Is this a good time for you to talk? To? When holding a meeting in your office, have your incoming calls. If there's a vital call you need to take, explain to your guest in advance. Don't keep appointments waiting with a personal explanation and a sincere apology. Answer letters within 10 days. Respond to every request to them. Get to a meeting on time. Don't monopolize discussions if you lead meetings. If you lead meetings, start them and end them on time. When making presentations, don't even... Don't go even one minute over the allotted time. Introduce people properly. Present the younger, lower-ranking person to the older, higher-ranking person. Address doctors, judges, military office, officers, academics, elected officials by their proper title. Remain sensitive to the culture, religious laws, and diet of international visitors and colleagues. Study the practices of other nations before you visit them. Get a book on table manners for business meals. RSVP within one week to all invitations. Write thank you notes to acknowledge any thoughtful act. Time is the coin of our life. It is the only coin you have and only can determine how it will be spent. Be careful lest your other people spend it for you. Carl Sandburg, 
get organized. Disorganized is the major contributor to stress. One of the reasons we don't achieve our goals. You can achieve and avoid this disease of clutter, poor planning, and disarray. Yes, you can get organized. Make time to organize. Set yearly goals, monthly goals, objectives, weekly, weekly priorities. Don't start a new task until you have everything you need, information, supplies, and so on, and get it underway. Plan ahead. Lay ahead subtasks needed for overcoming these weeks in order to accomplish a master task. Keep a to-do list. Tasks needed according to the value A, high, B, medium, C, low. Work on only high-value tasks. Update your list at the end of the day. Do one of four things whenever you pick up a piece of paper. Pitch it and send it to someone else. Act on it. The file. File it. Never put it down without performing at least one action. Do one of four whenever you pick up a piece of paper. Pitch it. Send it to someone else. Act on it or file it. Pitch it. Send it to someone else. Act on it or file it. Never put it down without performing one of these actions. Sort the paper you need file to into a to-do, to file, to read, pitch to the rest. To-do, to file, to read. Stop being a collector. Put away papers, files, and other desk clutter that you haven't looked at for two weeks. Divide complex projects into manageable pieces. Attack the project piece by piece. Solve one problem at a time. Write down every promise you make and everything you need to remember right away. Never on slips of paper. Always using a schedule system, a note-taking procedure that works with you. On this master list, note the tasks you'll complete today. Maintain an appointment calendar. Use a coordinated system to keep tracks of projects. Keep your desktop cleared for action. Dost thou love life? Then do not squander time, for that is the stuff that life is made of. Benjamin Franklin Stop wasting time. Often, without thought, we allow time wasters to gobble up chunks of our day. We can prevent these minute maulers from doing their damage. Yes, you can. When planning a new activity, anticipate all the mites that go wrong if you won't be forced to fight fires when your unexpected crisis occurs. Don't answer the telephone during a meeting or a project that dis disturbs the flow of progress or causes that waste other people's time. Keep your desk and office organized so that you have a quick access to what you need. Put things in a place where you don't have to hunt for them. Delegate effectively so you are not busier than the subordinates and you can make the best use of your time. Communicate with the intent to be understood so that you don't have to send the same message twice. Improve your listening skills so that you'll never be paralyzed by uncertainty about, to someone, about what someone has asked of you. See the meeting you attend to starts and ends on time and there is no unnecessary deviations from the agenda. Stop smoking. You may spend hours each buying cigarettes, hunting for them, lighting them, taking them, flicking them, snuffing them out, and emptying ashtrays, coughing, and reading articles about cancer. Stop smoking. Stand up with unwanted vid visitors. Get past the pit bull who should guard your office. Come around from behind your desk and meet the person near your door. Stop thinking about what you have to do and do it. Know the true value of time. Snatch, seize, enjoy every moment of time. The true value of time is to snatch, seize, and enjoy every moment of it. Philip Dormer Stanhope Make good use of time. Most of us need to find a way to get more out of the hours available to us. It can be done, and you could do it. Yes, you can. Spend like, Spend time like money. Use it to do what is important to you, not what others tell you what's important. Examine your daily life routines that can be altered to dispense for the immediate time savings. Example, reading the entire newspaper every morning. Save your most challenging work for the times of the day from which you're freshest and you're at your best. Time of day for you ask yourself, I'm making the best of my, my time right now. Change tasks if you aren't. Look for your watch frequently to assess the effectiveness of your time management skills. Write less, phone more. Outline topics to discuss the telephone. Make telephone appointments over conversations with what can I do for you, how are you, what can I do for you, how are you, bring calls to a prompt close after completing your business. Get to your work earlier than others and stay there later and profit from interrupted productivity. During the day, do some of your own work away from the office for the same reason. Doesn't take over projects. Don't take over projects because others are not doing their jobs. Instead, teach and empower them to produce. Write answers to letters in the margins of the ones you receive. Discontinue unnecessary meetings. See the ones you must attend are conducting more effectively, efficiently. Don't overdo revisions when the cost of redoing the work exceeds the value of, improving, of improvement gained. Don't serve time. Make time serve you. Willie Sutton Use waiting time productively. 
How much time do you spend standing in line, stalled in traffic, sitting in airplanes, waiting for an appointment or a meeting to begin, being put on hold for any time of the hundreds of ways life placed you in a suspended animation? Even this time spent waiting averages only 15 minutes a day could easily consume over 200 days of your lifetime. It can make better use of this time. Yes, you can. Regard waiting as a gift of time, as a disruption to your productivity. Take advantage of this gift. If you typically find yourself in large chunks of waiting time, enroll in a home study college course. Keep a good book by your side. Catch up on a pleasure business reading. Buy a notebook computer so that you can be productive away from the office even when there's no electricity. Take work with you wherever you go. Do not do tasks that don't normally find time to do when you're in the office. Update your to-do list and your calendar. Set goals for the next year. Take a refreshing cat nap, not in traffic. Let your mind wander through a task you're tackling. Visualize your progress and the next steps you'll take. Dream of new ways to attack the problem. Ask what if, why not questions. Carry a small pad and pen. When all the times the record ideas, they'll get to the run. Carry a small pad and pen with you all the times the record ideas you get while you're on the run. Learn while you drive. Use time stuck in traffic to improve your mind and educate with educational audio tapes. Work on one task while waiting for another to be completed. Examples, make a phone call where your computer or printer completes a routine. A committee of three. Committee of three gets things done if two don't show up. Herbert V. Procknow. Stand out at meetings. You may run every meeting you attend. But you can be sure to actively participate, thereby contribute significantly to the what gets accomplished. Yes, you can arrive on time with an agenda in hand. Don't miss meetings with prior notification approval. Stop doing any personal work as soon as the meeting begins. Stick to the agenda and the task at hand given at the moment. Build to the present discussion rather than changing the focus to your own interests. Be positive. Maintain problem-solving, not blame-placing postures. Focus on the future rather than getting mired in the past. Focus on what can be done rather than agonizing over the group's limitations. Participate, speak up, and be candid. But don't monopolize the meeting. Encourage the colleagues to do the same. When the meeting leaders fail to move the group into the productive direction, suggest ways to get the meeting back on track without threatening the leader. Challenge bad ideas. Present better ones. Don't attack people in the process. Perform any good and perform any agreed upon between meeting follow up tasks within twenty four hours. Never leak confidential discussions to outsiders. Report back immediately to those who count on being briefed by the regarding or to the outcomes of the meeting. Whenever the group makes a democratic decision that goes against your judgment, say so. But once your exception is noted, support the group's decision to be hilt. The training makes men happiest in themselves, also makes them most serviceable to others. John Ruskin. Choose the best seminars for you. These days, training companies and consultants offer the overwhelming selection of professional development opportunities. You could choose the best ones for you. Yes, you can. Review the most recent performance reviews and identify the deficiencies that might be addressed in the seminar. Ask your boss for suggestions. Define clearly what you want out of a seminar you're attracted by learning, networking. Do you want to acquire specific skills, certification, something else? Read the brochure carefully. If it's a sleazy or classy, do you benefit from attending sound attractive to you? Does the outline look relevant to your needs? Is it certification offered in your field? Are you identified in those who should attend sections? Call your sponsoring organization. Find out how many times the speaker has conducted the seminar. Ask for a list of past participants you can call. Be aware of how well the organization handles your questions. Check into the reputation of the sponsor and the speaker. How well are they known in the field? Is it guaranteed of satisfaction provided? Call the speaker. Ask about the format. Is it all lecture? Will the attendees form a small group, role play? Does the schedule allow time to question for answers? How do you feel about his or her responses? Find out how many people are likely to attend. Lower price seminars may attract hundreds. Great for networking, but not great to relying on individual attention. Decide whether the fee seems to correlate with the perception of the quality of the program. Don't pay too much. Don't search for bargains. The shy man will not learn. The impatient man should not teach. Ask and learn. Hillel the elder. Get the most out of a seminar. Those who profit the most from seminars plan their approach to this learning opportunity. You too can get more out of a seminar you attend. Yes, you can. Before you go, talk to your boss or someone else to whom can set goals for gaining specific new skills.
Prior to the seminar, read a book of the topic, preview whatever materials are made available by the instructor. Arrive ready to hit the ground learning. Be sure you know how to find a seminar location. Arrive 30 minutes early. Introduce yourself to the instructor and to the other participants. Build a network of contacts. Be an active participant, considering meeting room laboratories where you would try to where you will try new behaviors, take risks, and engage in self-discovery. Avoid doing business during breaks. Let your office know that you won't be available to take calls. Take notes and resolve within 24 hours and then once a week until you have achieved the learning goals. Connect with what you learned to yourself. Don't think so-and-so needs to hear this, so-and-so was not at the seminar. You're there to clean up your own act. Build your own action plan. At each break, write down those ideas that might implement you into a daily work. Meet with your boss the first day back from the job. Reveal your new ideas. Ask your boss to identify which strategies could and should have priority and get your boss to support you putting them into practice. Request an ongoing coaching relationship. There's no future in any job. The future lies in the man who holds the job. George Crane. Survive the reorganization hanging on to your job following a takeover or downsizing of the company is a blessing but the immediate aftermath can be stressful fraught with uncertainty can you do something to improve your morale productivity and ability to survive in an uneasy period yes you can don't wallow in guilt over your friends who are gone you'll need to be your best to survive in the next round of cutbacks stay of Stay out of the grapevine. Top management will think less of a trustworthiness if they think the wind of criticisms you have, the chances that you have unwilling to state openly. While having concerns about the new job security is natural, don't become paranoid. If you're losing sleep about the future, seek counseling requests, assurance from the top management, or find another job. Don't waste your energy looking for scapegoats. The bad guys in the scenario changing the market need to close the customers or worsening financial conditions. Negative anger and resentment will hurt your chances to survive. Become a spokesman for hope, renewal, better times. When co-workers preach gloom and doom, chime in with optimism. Point to the sun behind the clouds. You'll help yourself energize them and gain points in the boardroom. Work toward the future. This may not be in the end of the corporate upheaval. Continue to develop your skills and increase your opinion. Five years from now, the details of today will be insignificant. There's no security on this earth. There's only opportunity. Douglas MacArthur. Increase your job security. Fellow employees are falling like flies in the midst of corporate downsizing. You love your job and you want to make sure you keep it. Can you take out the insurance policy for job security? Yes, you can. Choose a, job in an, choose a job in an occupation where rapid growth is projected in the coming years. Go work for a smaller company. Financial adversity is less likely to trigger layoffs in a mom and pop shop than in corporate behemoth. Behemoth. Become the best at what you do and indispensable. I've seen a team player who seeks to promote the company more than yourself, to be willing to move laterally as well as vertically to, be, to benefit the firm, to work with the unit your company to contribute the most to the bottom line and the most vital to the company's mission, to make your unit more successful and therefore more vital for the company. To find out what's hot in your field and become an expert at it and stay at the top of your new developments. To find out what's important to the CEO and become the most reliable supplier of it. Recommend cost-saving and income-producing measures. Work for a powerful and respected boss who is not likely to receive the largest staffing hits. Make your boss look good continually. Make no enemies. A scorned co-worker might be in a position someday to engineer your demise. Be a good friend. A close colleague might be in a position to give higher-ups of an opinion of your value to the firm. Experience is not what happens to a man. It's what a man does with what happens to him. Aldous Huxley. Survive a job loss. Survive a job loss. Yes, you can negotiate better severance packages that you can get. Develop bare bones house budgets. Consider taking the loans out from relatives or, if necessary, declaring bankruptcy. The world is just fell apart how to survive a job loss the job you were counting on the last four years is no longer yours can you endure expect to experience these emotional stages disbelief betrayal anger embarrassment panic engage the self-talk consider getting professional help if you need but let your family provide emotional support as soon as you're ready to plan for a new job spend at least a day or two considering the possibilities make a list of everyone who can assist you with your new job search don't badmouth any company or anyone from your past Make an employment picture that's nice. Before you get too far into your new job, ask why you really lost your last one and study and correct. Success is a matter of luck. Ask any failure. 
Success is a matter of luck. Ask any failure. Earl Wilson. Conduct a smart job hunt. Make sure that with chasing a few of a job needs to increase probability that you find a position that you'll advance with in your, in your career. Make sure that you're preparing your well organized with a tasteful designed resume. If your job hunts dictated on the loss of a boss, take some time to calm down. Don't expect results from mass mailing. Contact people who might assist you in the job search and ask them what they can do to help. Look for opportunities to network at seminars, professional meetings, and conventions. Have a friend posing as a potential employer. Check that each of your references extols your virtues. Wait 10 days before responding to a help wanted ad. When you find a company where you really want to work, express your enthusiasm and tell the employee that you're willing to wait for an opening. As time passes, keep in touch. Your persistence may be rewarded. The closest thing to perfection a person ever becomes is when he fills out a job application form. Ace an interview. When two candidates have similar credentials the one who is better in selling him or herself usually gets the job how can you convince the interior interviewer that you are too good to pass up yes you can prepare thoroughly show a complete knowledge of the company as well as probing but not rude or invasive questions about current corporate issues do not do the following appear aggressive or submissive use first names unless asked to smoke or even invited sit down before asked to look at your watch show anxiety or boredom ask about salary or benefits asking questions before the interview has finished asking them when asked be crystal clear on your career objectives when asked why you left your last job claim insufficient challenge no room for advancement that you were underpaid or that the company was not able was not stable or it was going on, it was losing its edge, never criticize your past boss. When asked to talk about yourself, cite specific examples of your outstanding accomplishments. When asked about your weaknesses, identify your strengths and committed improvements, presentation skills for good choice. Don't criticize yourself. Practice answering the question, questions that hope won't come up. Practice your table of etiquette for interviewing over meals. Mirror the tone and voice of the body language of the interviewer. Sit up in the same posture. When you're not speaking, listen. Ask for the job. Say, I'd very much like to work for you. If you invite me to join the team, I won't let you down. Chapter 7. Prosper at Home Where we love is home. Home that our feet may leave, but not our hearts. Oliver Wendell Holmes Sr. Less is more. Robert Browning Simplify your life Expanding cable services makes channel surfing more frustrating. Your automobile is a technological marvel, but the automatic antenna won't re-attract re anymore. Your battery run appliances are great, but you can never remember to recharge them. Your job demands half of your life, but you get magazines that can help you read every night of your week is committed. But can you get back control of your life? Yes, you can. Remember that you have many choices. No one holds a gun to your head and says that you must complicate your life. Yes, you can. Keep needs versus wants in perspective. Do you mistakenly believe that you need that exotic new electronic gear or when in fact you only want it? Cut back on complexity and expenses of your lifestyle that you can transfer to a lower paying or less demanding job. Learn how to say no. When your boss piles up the work and asks what's important enough to be done around here in the time that you have to do it, and what can wait take stock of how much of how much what you do benefits you directly and how much you do for others for example your children for what you ought to learn for them to do for themselves what they need to learn to do for themselves reduce the number of gadgets in your life when your garage door opener breaks down disconnect it make coffee at the stove pull out your answering machine and limit the options of your next car weed out magazine subscriptions don't do it yourself pay someone else to do it learn to say no when you are asked to help volunteer for or join a group or a cause put aside your hour or an hour each day during from which you only do what you want to do not what the world tells you to do I've been rich and I've been poor rich is better Sophie Tucker save money some people never seem to have enough money the more they make the more difficult it is to hang on to it you can stop squandering your hard-earned income yes you can pay no more in taxes than you have to devour self-help tax books by professional tax advice if possible sell your car instead of use a combination of public transportation taxis or rental cars 
Shop your bank and investment agencies with the lowest service charges and with the highest rates of return. Invest windfalls of lowering your mortgage principal to a lower in total interest you'll pay. Avoid large impulse buys. Cut up the credit cards and always pay off your balances before the interest is charged to your account. Stop visiting the mall as a pastime. Only go when you need something. Refuse to buy anything that is not on sale. Make what you have last longer. Change the oil in your car more often and keep your car in the garage. Dust and coils of your refrigerator. Remove good clothing as soon as you come home. Hold on to everything 25% longer. Buy the right things at the right place. Learn the cheapest in the supermarket. What to buy in the discount warehouse and which items are priced at the same everywhere. Clip manufacturers and retailer coupons and negotiate. You'll be surprised on how much cash starved retailers are willing to give discounts to those who ask for them. Buy things used or slightly damaged. Visit thrift stores, consignment shops, garage sales, large flea markets. Ask for in regulars or in factory outlets. Request blemishes, auto tires. Buy day old baked goods. Keep the eyes wide open before marriage and half shut afterwards. Benjamin Franklin. Choose a compatible mate. Divorce is painful. Unhappy marriages are worse. It will be tough enough to make a life with another person if you pick the right person. Don't start married lives with two strikes against two of you. You can avoid the irreversible error. Yes, you can before you marry. Think long and hard about the marriage, what marriage means to you. Why are you getting married to eliminate the vicissitudes of existence? For example, loneliness or to enjoy life fully by sharing it with someone else. The latter is a healthier reason. The explicit expectations do you have for your spouse? What are they? Are they any behaviors you insist upon, you think? What kind of relationship are you hoping for? Discuss the answers to the questions with your future spouse. Over a period of weeks, discuss expectations both for having a marriage. Decide what's really important. Resolve any differences and negotiate to the point where you can willingly buy into each other's expectations before you tie the knot. Marry based on compatibility, caring, and common values. Slight adjustments in these areas may be possible, but don't hope for or expect major changes. Do like everything. Do like everything about the way of your future spouse has treated you before and decided to get married. If not, remember, it won't get any better after the ceremony. What do you enjoy more, the things you do for your prospective spouse or the things that he or she does for you? The future looks bright for the two of you if each responds to the question by saying, the things I do for her or him. Can you say with confidence that you're looking forward to growing old with this person? Marriage resembles a pair of shears, so joined that they cannot be separated, often moving in opposite directions, yet always pu punishing anyone who comes between them. Sidney Smith Have a happy marriage. Have a happy marriage. Yes, you can. Listen. In the evening, ask your spouse to share the day's experiences with you before you do the same. Give the undivided attention. Respond to the feelings that you are expressed, and don't reject any of them. Half the mistakes made in a relationship will be yours. Apologize when you make them, and don't make them in mere apology ever lets you get off the hook. And make a commitment to your partner not to repeat the mistake. Fulfill that commitment. Make up after fights. Be the first to seek reconcil reconciliation. Send the note to call your spouse at work, from work, either apologizing, merely say, I'm sorry we had such a little terrible or a terrible fight. Support your spouse, be his or her blocker, coach, cheerleader. Lift your spouse up to the world. Never criticize the one you love to others. Never ridicule him or her any time, any place. Never threaten to tell the spouse to get out unless you mean it for good. Ask your feedback on what you're doing. On a regular basis, discuss what each of you could be doing more or less of, equally for each other. Don't harbor unexpressive negative feelings. These are the seeds of alienation and separation. Touch your partner constantly with hugs, rubs, holding hands. Hang on to intimacy for dear life. Renew your wedding vows when you are married or in a special place in the presence of loved ones. If we had paid no more attention to our plants than we had to our children, we would now be living in jungles of weeds. Be a better parent. Yes, you can. Spend at least 15 minutes a day talking to your child. Find out what's on their minds. Tell them about your job and talk about your work day. Lead by example, but not exhortation. Communicate your values by deed, not by laying down the law. Assign children meaningful household duties. Teach them how to contribute to an upkeep of their home. Teach them financial responsibility. Make them earn at least a portion of the money that they need or want from special purchases, activities, and family vacations in college. 
Watch for trouble signs, changes in fields, values, weights, routines, or mood. Take threats of suicide seriously and seek counseling for your child the same day. Don't ignore your own welfare, if that of your spouse, by getting totally absorbed in your children's lives. Say, I'm sorry when you've hurt them and admit when you're wrong. Accept that your children aren't carbon copies. They're not carbon copies, so don't expect them to respond to life the same way you have. Endure the stage they go through because being embarrassed to see you. Endure the stage they may go through of being embarrassed to be seen with you. Pay attention to positive behavior. Praise it so children will repeat it. Arrange for responsible adult supervision when they are not there. Leave detailed instructions in your will outlining how you want your children to be raised. There is no friendship, no love, like that of the parent for the child. Henry Ward Beecher Be a better step-parent. Yes, you can, during a courtship with the next spouse. Don't romance the kids. Don't lavish excessive attention on them. But show them how to be happy, and you are to being married to them, too. Expect to resent... Except to be resented, especially if the other parent is still alive. Even if the parent has died, the children may feel that you're taking their mother or father away from them, probably because they got lots of attention between the end of the previous marriage and your arrival on the scene. Resolve any issues from which the children have addressed to you. Watch your own children for the signs they feel the favor of the new spouse over them. Talk about the issues with the child and discipline your spouse and come to the agreement about exactly how to handle it and discipline with your spouse. And talk with your spouse for a few minutes each night about how well you guys are doing with each other. There's only two lasting bequests that we can hope to give our children. One of these is roots, and the other is wings. Hotting Carter, Jr. Raise positive, successful children. Yes, you can teach your children to express emotional distress and pain rather than sit on their feelings. Dish out lots of positive reinforcement. When you do, praise your children's deeds, not them, so not to connect their self-esteem to their performance. In the same way, when you criticize, condemn the deed, not the doer. Respond to expressions of the fear, not asking your children to talk about what they're feeling. Share similar anxieties you had, you had at their age. Accept their emotions as real. Never criticize, ridicule, or make light of their feelings. Lavish attention on older siblings when new babies arrive. Don't smother children with protection and control. Give them privacy without letting them become reclusive. When you are infants, respond quickly to their cries and give them lots of physical love. Listen to your children. Don't make them wait for some something important with you. At the same time, teach them their needs won't always be met on demand. Be their sex educator before the streets take over. If you love your work, let your children know. Let your children witness expressions of warmth and caring and displays of affection between you and your spouse. What we want to see in the child in pursuit of knowledge and not knowledge in the pursuit of the child. Help children learn. Yes, you can buy your children educational toys when they're, when they're young. Don't be a commercial TV addict. If you're limited on viewing time, be easier you find your limit, you limit theirs. Train them to be readers. Read and read them beginning in infancy. Give them the books as gifts throughout their lives. Let them see you reading and enjoying books. Teach them to be readers. Hold home spelling bee quizzes and other tests for prizes. Train your children to ask questions at an early age. Be receptive to them. Praise their inquisitives, inquisitiveness. Teach them the importance of putting into an effort of not focusing much on results. Discourage them from equating their self-esteem from their grades. Appreciate good report cards, and but don't make a big deal about them. Don't enroll them sooner than necessary in elementary school. Bright kids are often weak socializers. Visit teachers. Discuss the curriculum. Show the appreciation to teachers. Ask how you can help out, and don't become a bother to them. Back up good teachers praise them to your children scan teacher rosters in coming school years and speak when it appears that a teacher's assignment has been made for an administrative expedience rather than a child's benefit consider the possibility of homeschooling if the time and talent are available between you and your spouse start saving today for the child's college tuition you can learn many things from children how much patience you have for instance franklin p jones discipline children discipline children constructively Yes, you can. Make no empty threats or weak statements about what you don't want them to do. Yes, you can. Make no real threats. Don't yell or nag. Yes, you can. Pick your fights carefully. Don't discipline excessively or over trivial matters. Don't allow tantrums to escalate. Call a truce 
when either side needs to cool off to calm down put your feelings in writing never hit your children you could correct behavior children's behaviors by teaching them self-discipline this will not be accompanied by physical force never resort to bribery to get your way when criticizing say what you see don't brand a room full of toys messy Call it what it is, a room full of toys. Make no you statements. Make plenty of I statements to express feelings more than to demand compliance. When you criticize an action, say what's wrong with it. Don't simply insist on having your way. Say what's wrong with it when you criticize an action. When corrective action is required, enlist your child in a devise of a plan. What can we do to be sure that this doesn't happen again? After you deliver discipline, hug your children, express unconditional love, even if it rejects your behavior that's triggered the discipline. In, un uh, in a united family, happiness springs of itself. Chinese proverb, create a close-knit family. Yes, you can. If possible, give your first child at least one brother or sister. When children are younger, make an expectation for establishing a family team, clearly known as a family team. Encourage your family to support, defend, and protect each other in public, even as if you disagree in private. Never take sides in fights, but step up as impartial facilitators to help resolve them. Hold weekly family meetings to create a climate where feelings can be openly discussed. Make sure that the youngest members are listened to seriously as the oldest ones. Consult the whole family when making important decisions from choosing a pet to planning a vacation. Demand respect from every family member, regardless of age or infirmity. Discipline, disrespectful behavior, especially when it is directed at parents or grandparents. Discipline, disrespectful behavior. Schedule fun family events from the time of children are young. Take your children with them more often that you leave them with a babysitter. Continue taking family vacations for as long as possible. Expose your children to an extended family. Give them plenty of opportunities to relate to grandparents, aunts, uncles, and cousins. Hold family reunions each one year. Take your children to weekly religious worship beginnings at an early age. Take your children to weekly religious worships beginning at an early age. One should know more about affectionate in front of a child without including him than eat in front of him while he remains hungry. One should no more be affectionate in front of a child without including him than eat in front of him while he remain hungry. Express family, love more fully. Express family, love more fully. Yes, you can. Listen to the people who you love when they come to you with their problems and concerns or fears throughout your actions and show people that you love them and the relationships with them and it's more important to you that that your jobs and your hobbies and your possessions to give your time to them time is the most precious gift you can give say let's do something together and then let's follow through ask them to talk about what's happening in their lives say I love you often with feeling in the most unexpected times display lots of physical affection especially when you haven't seen each other for an extended period of time take care of the people you love when you are ill share your most powerful feelings and your most protected emotions Show an interest in getting involved in activities, for example, hobbies. We are important to others in our family. Show your respect for people who love by soliciting their ideas and opinions and then acting upon them. Feel how deeply you love people who you love with and let your involuntary and uncontrollable nonverbal cues, for example, eyes, face, and gestures, take over and say it for you about how you feel. Take a deep faith with the people that you love. These are thy glorious works, parent of good get along with adult children yes you can do this before you become adults change the way you relate with them to match their advancing emotional age to give them the opportunities to make mistakes set up a timetable for their emancipation share your opinions in a non-threatening take it or leave it spirit let them stand in their own but but be there to help accept them as adults and friends find new outlets for energy once you've devoted your child to rearing, make sure that they're aware of how much you love and appreciate them and write letters and call them on the phone to remind them. Accept your life's choices, even after you let them know that you may not agree with them. And if you plan to help them financially, don't withhold the help until you no longer need it or they no longer need it or so they receive it after you're done or after you're gone. Don't feel entitled to a certain frequency of contacting with your kids. You won't encourage your more communication by making them feel guilty nor by calling or stopping by. Don't complain constantly to your children about your health or other problems. While you shouldn't hide your adversities from them, you need to be there for their help. Be there for help. Project an image and project an image of strength and independence. You need to feel that you're taking good care of yourself. 
When I was a boy of 14, my father was so ignorant, I could hardly stand to have the old man around. But when I got to be 20, I was astonished on how much he had learned in seven years. Mark Twain Be a valued son or daughter. Yes, you can. Don't take advantage of your parents. Do everything possible to avoid infringing on their lives. After you should have moved on and gone for the good. Give your parents a solitude that they need and may not have asked for. Older parents have same to privacy and have a need for privacy when they were young and still make love for precious moments and engage in other forms of intimacy. Introduce them to your friends and help your parents to feel part of your life. While you're still live, living with your parents, assume regular responsibilities for chores around the house and help them out. Ask them for advice. This will make your parents feel useful and you'll benefit from their years of experience. When you disagree with them so openly, be respectfully. Make it clear that you disagree with no way of diminishing the esteem from which you hold for them. Surprise! them on anniversaries, cook them something, take them on a vacation, or do other nice things for them. Maintain close and warm relationships with your siblings. A close-knit family is a source of support for you and a source of satisfaction for your parents. After you move out of the house, stay in close communications with them. Call, write, visit often. Bring your family to spend the holidays with your parents. A grandmother is a person with too much wisdom to let that stop her from making a fool of herself over her grandchildren. Phil Moss be a better grandparent. Yes, you can offer your children any parenting suggestions they request. Force unwanted advice on them. Make their, make their own mistakes. Share your ideas tentatively so that not to make them feel inadequate as parents. Adopt a hands-on approach with your grandchildren. Bonds with each early in their lives. Take your grandchildren places without the parents on an occasion. Create your own relationships with them. Leave disciplining to the parents and support them in it. Be a teacher, confidant, and a supporter. If you live far away, send your grandchildren audio or videotapes with special messages from you. Write letters often. Allow each child to be an individual. Don't expect children to mirror you, their parents, or each other. Never let grandchildren hear you compare one, one with another. Don't give the nickname that diminishes the other's example. Don't call one the special guy or be prepared for jealousy from older grandchildren when you lavish attention on the latest arrival. Don't take sides in family squabbles, but always be available to listen to hurts. Never criticize your children in front of other children. If you live with your children, respect you, their privacy. And don't complain about the food or your living conditions. Help the household chores, handle your own finances, and provide the family with treats now and then. To be 70 years young is sometimes far more cheerful and hopeful than to be 40 years old. All are for Wendell Holmes, Jr. Enjoy your retirement. Yes, you can. Begin making financial plans for comfortable retirement today. Seek professional counsel to make a commitment to securing your fiscal future. If you're starting late, build retirement capital by working extra five or six years. Don't allow work to become a central purpose of your life. Some who do fail to physically survive in the few or six months of retirement, others who work for the past retirement age miss out on the indescribable joys of life that store for those who stores those who time to celebrate it develop hobbies and interests that you can expand in, in during your retirement plan to volunteer your skills in the community and commit your energies to a social cause to, dear to you renegotiate roles and people at your home and how you can use to newfound time to help out and consider starting a business of your home get a book or home business opportunities try things to that you've never experienced before you may discover a talent that you never knew you had telephone or write letters to all your friends whom you have time to keep who you have haven't had time to keep in touch with talk to all retirees and learn from their experiences get involved with a group of organizations of retirees who stay active and have fun take time to enjoy simple things in life plant a garden read a comic book stroll through the woods stay healthy eat well exercise keep an active body and a mind there's no happiness there is no misery like that growing of out of a disposition of concentrate and desecrate of a home there's no happiness there is no misery like like that growing out of dispositions which con consecrate consecrate and desecrate a home edwin h chapin resolve family quarrels yes you can a necessarily requisite in implementing the steps of this list to swallow your pride and believe that your most important goal is to restore family harmony restore the dignity and self-respect of family members you may have lost face with during the disagreement from which you lose face in the process of resolving the dispute applaud members who are willing to back down from the earliest reposition 
earlier positions offer and make concessions giving good demands and make a friendly gesture and welcome reciprocation admit that you're wrong about something and the gesture is likely to encourage the other person to do the same if so the two of you may be on the good road of reconciliation Recognize that a lot of family conflicts is caused not by genuine disagreement but by misunderstanding. Initiate the meeting where two of you role play with each other, doing the best you can to articulate the position that the other person has taken. Listen on your earlier miscommunications and get cleared up. When confronting a family member, stick to the issues and don't get caught up in the exchange of accusations. Focus on fixing the fixture, not laying blame on the past. Work together to arrive and to answer to a question What do we need to do? to have this kind of relationship we both want from now on. Love the quest, marriage, the conquest, divorce, the inquest, cope with divorce, yes you can. If you're losing sleep, suffering from depression, if you believe that you're still love with your ex, the children are involved, getting feedback, immerse yourself, view the divorce, write a story, but don't be dragged into verbal battles over your ex, telephone any person. Just stay continued on with another life in another time. Death is not the greatest loss in life, it's the greatest loss in which dies within us while we live. Cope with the death of a loved one. Yes, you can. Grieve naturally and let yourself cry, both in public and in private. The sooner and more fully you can express your pain, the sooner you'll be able to get on with your life. Expect the past. Expect the past through several stages of grieving and grieving. This is shock, disbelief, denial, painful sadness and emptiness, anxiety, irritability, guilt, anger, preoccupation with memories and the deceased. Express any anger they expressed because the person who has left you, if you feel, why did you do this to me, don't be ashamed to shout it. Recognize the person who has left would be upset at the thought that you'd intend to stop living. Think about the millions who have survived bereavement. Now you will too. Remember that you have always in your memories to keep this person alive in your heart. In this way, his or her powerful influences on you will never end. Talk to others who have faced the loss and ask them how they share their experiences and join a start to support group. If your faith includes the belief of life after death, keep in mind that heaven is a far better place than, you've, than your loved one. Look forward into the reunion there. Be patient with yourself. Some people need the time to recover. On the other hand, if you bounce back, back quickly, don't mistake this as a sign of not caring. As soon as you think you may need to counseling, get it. And yes, you can. 1200 inspiring ideas and work home and happinesses inspiring ideas for work home and happiness yes you can sam deep and lyle sussman